Oh, oh, hello. There we go. Howdy. Howdy. Do you have a face? No. Oh. <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> okay. Is that all right? Or yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say we're, we're vaguely connected because you're familiar with a couple of guys from FNT, right? Or Geeks and Gamers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. I see them every once in a while. If we sort of mix stuff together. Oh, are you pals it's with just... them? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jeremy, cool. uh, okay. on very right. good terms with, and Ryan. I didn't know like... what I'm getting into. <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> all right. Well, you're one There's of the no... boys. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I think I think the, the people in chat are just excited. That's all. Like they, okay, cool. uh, all this right. happens on all kinds. Yeah, of shows, I never you know? know what I get. So. Yeah, no, well, so uh, you <laughs> occupy a really interesting space in Star Wars fandom for me because I often sort of see a split. Let's say like with TLJ, it's the people who love it, the people who hate it is typically how it goes. It's some people yeah. who are indifferent somewhat, but um, you, you're like with the, the Disney era and the development of the Filoni stuff, the Favreau stuff, I feel like there's loads of splinters now. Yeah. And so I, I thought your video was fascinating when you were saying like enough is enough, you know, Disney's been damaged in this way, that way and the other. Right. We on uh, you know EFAP and my channel, we believe like the rot sets in the second Disney buys Star Wars. Like it's it's already game over almost. Yeah. Controversially, we thought that Mando season one was significantly flawed for writing. Like it damages characters, it damages world building. But we were relatively tolerant of it. Season two was much worse, and then season three was a catastrophic. And then if you move over to Book, Book of Boba Fett and Kenobi, we thought those were awful. And I think we share very similar reasoning on like why for Kenobi, yeah. for example. Yeah. Then there's Ahsoka, which um, I think you, have you, are you guys like relative fans of one through six episodes and the seven one, and eight are the ones. One through six. Yeah. I enjoyed. And then, yeah, seven and eight. Yeah, we were we were of the long. impression that like the show from the get go was already in serious trouble, like ass. in terms of writing, pacing, yeah. uh, Sort of different aspects, but you know, we, we still appreciate a lot of the stuff that I think you guys probably would have loved, right? Like, um, I still think the best thing of the show is Ray Stevenson. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing is that it's it's in every Star Wars project they make, it's still at the end of the day has Star Wars, so it's going to have these underlying themes of a lightsaber or the Force or something. But at the end of the day, that's not exactly what makes Star Wars what Star Wars is. And I think that's where you come in is you really. Uh, kind of make that evident that it, it's it's not just about using the force or or being a skywalker or whatever there's so sure. much more to it i if i was going to say that sort of feels like maybe where we, uh, we split significantly where i thought andor was excellent and it's the best thing that disney's ever made for star wars while you uh <laughs> don't want to sell you in a particular way but you think it's boring and uh maybe good but not star wars blade runner ish is uh you know, when I was watching it, I actually was enjoying the show. I just wanted to see a lot more in terms of something happening. I guess I wanted to see, <laughs> I wanted to see Jedi and lightsabers yeah. and and this and that. And I think because I've been so um, deprived from Disney that I'm just hungry for it at this point, where I just constantly I want to see it because I haven't. I you know we got a glimpse of. That little bit at the end of Mando season two with Luke, and I mean, that's it. That's all that I've been fed. So it's like it, I'm, I'm, I want more. Would it be safe to say that that's probably one of the you consider one of the greatest things to come out of Disney Star Wars, Mando two uh, season two finale? Uh, no, no, probably no, because I, I, no, because it, it, if that were the case, then I would you know choose a, a fan film that was just pure action or whatever, pure lightsabers to be mm. the, the best sort of thing, but it's not the case. Um, it was just a moment that really captivated me uh, after The Last Jedi and feeling, you know, I was in a position where like I, I am the largest Star Wars channel and so I'm I'm kind of like, I, I don't want to propagate anger and hatred and I don't want to propagate um, being a shill. So okay. it's like I felt I have to kind of sit in this middle position where like I'm very hopeful that Lucasfilm would come up with something that obviously makes sense with The Last Jedi. And at that point, um, season two, was Rise out yet? I think I think Rise was already out. So it was done. Of Skywalker? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, Skywalker yeah, was yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, it was already done. So, that, so for me, it was like, wow. We actually get to see Luke Skywalker in some capacity that we wanted to see him in the last 40 plus years. Uh, which was amazing. We only saw him for a few minutes and he just comes in there kind of like he did with at the end with um, Jabba's Palace with the Gamorrean Guards, just 
very stoic and very in control and it was like just took me back to being a child so for me that's not the best moment that disney has made in star wars i think the the, the best project would have to probably be um either tales of the jedi or i did really like rogue one mm -hmm. um but yeah, probably Tales of the Jedi or uh, Clone Wars, season seven. Yeah, okay. Not, so not, not the Martez sisters part, but the you know the last four episodes. <laughs> the last four. The last four. Yeah, yeah that's, that's that's that was to me, you know. Okay. Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Over on my uh, corner of the internet, we create reactions to a lot of the Star Wars shows. They come out a bit later because we edit them up sort of for copyright protection and animations yeah. and stuff. Yeah. We kind of hated the season two finale for Mando. And the reason was we we felt the writing was on the wall. When TLJ happened, um, a lot of the criticism of it, if you, I don't know if you remember, they were like, you idiots, you, you, you all you wanted was to Luke to just turn up and kill all of the 88. He's looking awesome, blah, blah, blah. Instead right. of appreciating the character arc, appreciating his, uh, his nature, that he was actually the true hero. He embodied Luke Skywalker, even though he doubted it himself. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with my work, but it does, I despise TLJ. I think it's like one of the worst insults to a franchise that ever existed. It, it damaged agree. everything. Agreed. And I think that well. on a sort of wider scale, it, it destroyed potentially one of the most profitable IPs in history by splintering the fan base, in, like it's clean cut in two, yeah. which is not something you really want to do. Yeah. Now, I thought that Disney were going to reflexively overcompensate thanks to that reaction with giving us stuff like, hey, look, Luke's there and he's killing robots now, okay? Yeah. And they're so careful about it, they're not even willing to have him talk very much. They're yeah. not willing to have him interact very much. There's like, look at him, he's, he's like he's in carbonite. They don't want him to be touched. He's yep. really cool, he kills stuff, he's strong. Please don't say anything else. And that's why that finale felt so weird to us. He just turns up, he doesn't talk to anybody, he doesn't want to know what's going on. He's not curious at all about all the roles of the people in that room. We don't know much about why he's there beyond that. And it feels like it's just not Luke Skywalker at all. We call him Luke Skinwalker. And exactly. we did again because of the, obviously the animation and the graphic design on him as well. Hmm. And then we were like, shit, is this the future for Star Wars? Is this right. all we're going to be getting? And then of course, if I was to label to you as you're familiar with, what did they do with Qui-Gon in the Kenobi show? What was that? Absolute disrespect. What did they do with Obi-Wan when he needed the strength to defeat oh, Darth okay. Vader? He thought about Leia. Dude. I'm not saying you can't have her as an inspiration, but yeah. where, where's Qui-Gon? Where's Luke? No. What's going on? Yeah. And you're familiar with how bad Book of Boba Fett and Kenobi are, but like these yeah. criticisms we have, I feel reflect quite significantly on some of the stuff that you guys, as far as I'm aware, praise. Yes. And so we see Kathleen Kennedy as a problem, as of course has been highlighted now by South Park. Mm -hmm. But we actually yeah. see John Favreau and Dave Filoni also to blame for damaging Star Wars. Meanwhile, I think you see them as more the correct custodians to take it forward. I think they're the only custodians we have, um, unless we get new talent in there. I mean, who who else is a better option than these guys that we so have I, right now? So I assume now your concern will be that you want a, a creative and talented artist, but also someone who cares very much about the integrity of Star Wars. Exactly. Well, I suppose we we should we, we want to find those people, right? Those creators. There's got to be some out there. That's the way I look at things. Is that I don't judge Disney Star Wars on. George Lucas Star Wars. There's a very big distinction in my mind of the two. Everything I see with Disney Star Wars, I'm, it's it's like you're play fighting with a child. You know, it's like, oh, ha, ha you beat me. Oh, uh. you know, it's that's well, so, how I uh, approach things. If uh, if Star Wars Episode Ten was coming and they said it's going to be directed by JJ and written by JJ, and if I said to you, well, better than Ryan, like that, that's not you know, I, I consider that unacceptable. I'd be like, well, they're both horrible for this franchise. We need to oh, keep I'm, them away. I'm, absolutely, but I mean, what? They're not going to listen to us. I, you know, I'm not. I can't make a video being, well, that sucks. We got to, you know, maybe get someone else. How long have we all been saying that? And absolutely, but like, we, I don't think we should. Like, you've expressed support for Felonia and Favreau, right? Absolutely, yeah. Except yeah, for I, Boba, Boba Fett and well, I, I, and Ahsoka's. Episode seven and eight, right? But I, I kind of leave that to just Kathleen meddling in. But I, at the end of the day, I don't know. Maybe it truly is John and Dave having some vision that I don't. I, don't I mean, uh, I assume that. you're familiar with John's recent work with uh, the Lion King, right? Yeah, how he made everything like kind of horrendous, completely action. spat on on the original, and completely fucked it up. And despite the fact that it made 
a ridiculous amount of money, which then spawns of all of these horrible live action remakes. He's responsible. He's uh, it's his baby. I would very much have sung the praises of John Favreau at a particular time in history. I adore Iron Man, and then of course there's a lot of works that come after that and before that are really top notch. Yeah, but uh, I I absolutely believe he's lost his way, especially when you consider the behind the scenes stuff of Iron Man too. Right, he quits Marvel because of the way they treat artists, he's not yeah. interested, and then he comes back to Disney. Yeah. What's going on there? And it's like, well, it's more than likely that he's more than familiar with how they crush artistry, and he just doesn't mind anymore. It's uh, it's definitely good for con- you know, rising in a career, making more money. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, he's a filmmaker and he wants to make Star Wars, but I feel like they just yeah. tie his hands so much. But again, more than I, likely, I don't know. Well, so I guess at that point, you know, do we blame JJ and Ryan even, or do we say it's KK? I mean, we blame JJ and Ryan for having a shit script, and then blame KK for appointing them as the people with full control for, I wouldn't even say arguably, one of the most potentially huge franchises of all time. Yeah, I completely and, agree. And, and, so... and to continue the Skywalker saga after George, I mean, and I, I always see this argument made online. It's like, well, the sequels made a billion dollars. and Well, no shit. You have six years of movie, six different films spanning 40 years, and you take a 10-year hiatus between episode three and then episode eight. Uh, seven you're going to be curious i mean they could have literally had like a someone peeling an egg for episode seven and people would have still bought tickets for it because they want to see okay this is episode seven you know so it it, they're using this argument constantly and i just don't think that it really has any validity whatsoever because it's just well it's star wars people are going to see it regardless because of what george created yeah no i'm with you completely and they've even damaged that right like the amount yeah. of people who go and see episode 10 is going to be significantly less now compared to if the sequel trilogy were built well, even just by wait until you see the ray movie we'll, we'll, till we <laughs> see the the analytics for the ray movie and it's like, presumably you it's... assume like i do that's one of the biggest mistakes they could have made is to announce they're making a ray movie after everything i'm not even surprised man and, no, and the, yeah. the thing is it's like but it's almost at the point now where it's like become satire so it's like it's you know the are you familiar with the movie the room Yes. Yeah, so it's almost like people now want to go see it to see how shit it is. Yeah. No disrespect to the room. I it's a hilarious, you know, masterpiece, but uh you know, it's like how many people are now going to see the movie because they want to continue the story? How many people are going to see the movie so they can see how ridiculously horrible it is? It's like you're just watching a train wreck. People want to watch the world burn sometimes, and they're going to get a lot of money from that. Yeah, I mean, Marvel's in the exact same state. Uh, the amount of discussion I've seen over the Marvels is more so about seeing the train wreck than seeing it because they're interested in where the story's going next. Same yep. goes for YouTube. For people who are hated, uh, you know, a click of view is, is the same thing. They're still going to be paid, whether it's people who love them mm-hmm. or people who go to see them to just trash on them or hate them. And so, yeah, um, I guess the big difference between you and I, and I just find it fascinating, is the... Um, the sort of promotion and celebration of their work, despite the fact it seems that you guys are very critical of a lot of the portfolio for Favreau and Filoni and Star Wars, which isn't uh, a contradiction. It's just mm-hmm. interesting. What do you mean by critical? By for what? So Mando season three or Ahsoka's oh, later uh, episodes or yep. yeah, like the influence because uh, Filoni would would it not be it would be safe to consider Ahsoka was his baby, right? He was in a massive amount of control of the story being told there. I would assume, yeah. And so, like, to me, that was the last straw. Like, a lot of people were telling me for a long time, Filoni is one of the best we could ha- ask for for a Star Wars continuation. But I was just like, this is not the guy for the job. You know, maybe it's Sam Witwer at this point. I don't know. I would, yeah, I'd be on board with trying Sam Witwer. I mean, yeah. isn't Skeleton Crew is being made by John Watts, right? Yeah, John Watts. I'd happily give John Watts a try, see what he can do. What is Skeleton Crew even about? Like a bunch of... No idea. <laughs> uh, Nobody it's supposed knows. to be goodies in space. I, there I you heard go. the villain was the pirate from Mando 3. Well, it's, I don't, it's I don't know if he's the villain. He's in there, but I don't think he's the big the big bad of Skeleton Crew. Steve Urkel. Yep. Oh, geez. Uh, he's a pirate? Okay, he's... Yeah. Two hours of makeup every day to be a pirate. Yeah. But, look, Mahler, it's the way... I, here, let me paint a picture. So, imagine... Imagine you're royalty for majority of your life. All of a sudden, your parents die, and now you're cast out in the desert to survive for yourself, and you're, you're crawling on the sand. There's the hot sun on you every day, cold nights, creatures trying to kill you and attack you. And someone comes along and throws you, I don't know, whatever, like a, 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 a sweet, a, a little 
juice box. You're going to look at them and be like, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. You're amazing. You're everything. But it doesn't mean that this is the best scenario. This is everything that I wanted. Like, well, you, you used to be royalty. You were treated the best. And that's George Lucas Star Wars, in my opinion. But now it's at the point where we're, <laughs> we're scrounging for scraps, as Thanos would say. And it's like, what else do we have? If we don't have Filoni, who else is going to step in? I, I don't know. Hopefully somebody great, you know, but we don't have that. So at this point, I'm, I'm clamoring for Luke Skywalker to come in swinging his lightsaber because that's what I've been wanting. I just want to see that. I didn't get to see that in The Last Jedi. It was a shit film, an unbelievably horrible script. The characters yeah. themselves, the actors themselves, didn't even know who the heck they were, who they were playing until the final end of the episode nine. And they were like, even they were like, what the hell? I mean, Finn was potentially had such a great role that we could have given him. But he was just given this sort of, as he said, the token black guy. And they just did this constantly with all of these films. They had a disjointed script. And so it left me very pissed off. And all the while, I'm still trying to be very hopeful and say, okay, well, you know, I, I don't want to be toxic, which is just speaking my opinion. And I don't want to be a shill. So it's like, you have this pent up emotion in me for years. And then finally, at this point, I'm like, oh, fuck, it's, it's all fucked. It's all destroyed. There's no, there's nothing left. What is left? So we have a few scraps of Dave Filoni giving us this and that. And uh, that's it. That's all we got. That's the only little bit of semblance that I have to go back to being a child. Unless I just dedicate to my, my channel doing one to six and the Clone Wars, I mean, which I've talked about doing. Um, so I mean, you know, with everything that releases, you can always talk about in a very calm way, like, you know, maybe what changes you would have made. You, you can always consume the, the content and then talk about it in a way because it you know it sounds like what you're saying is like what am i going to do just hate everything that comes out and it's like well there's always options for um it's not coverage no, right not so much about hating i would love to dude i would love to cover everything uh just in a normal cadence in a normal uh motion mm -hmm. but every tweet everything i say is clipped into oblivion is rearranged so i look like some person that i'm not and completely blown out of proportion on anything that I say. So it almost creates this sort of anger where I just, I now want to poke even more because I'm being poked. And to me, it's like, well, I just want to be left alone. I would love to discuss anything about Star Wars, but at the end of the day, it's, it's almost like I'm at this point where the spotlight is always there, where I'm just um, ridiculed for having my own opinions. And uh, it's by the most intolerable people that... I have zero respect for I mean, this point. You know, I assume it's no surprise to you or uh, the other lads here. Like, they, 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 I have the same thing. I'm constantly uh, shat on. And this is no uh, shot against you guys, but obviously a lot of people in your chat hate me because I represent a, a further along the spectrum. Like I'm oh. over the side that hates things even more than you guys could possibly. But the thing is, by occupying that space, you have the unfortunate reality of possibly being hated by both sides of it, so to speak, if you know what I mean. Because yeah. on my end, I'm like, why are you being so kind to these, this, that, and the other? And then everyone else is like, why are you being so hateful to these, this, and this? you know? Um, uh, so yeah, yeah, that's unfortunate and annoying. Especially yeah. when I, I appreciate a nuanced opinion as much as the next person. And to be honest with you, from speaking to you this briefly, it sounds like your appreciation of Filoni is more so because there's nothing else you can do in terms of appreciating Star Wars creators. Of course, if you're hungry and starving for food, um, would you not appreciate the half eaten the donut in the dungy alley of the dumpster. Well, sure, but you know, if you were provided TFA, uh, TLJ, and TROS all at once, would we then praise the one we thought was the best because the others are so much, they're just so bad? No. Why? No. Because they're all shit. So, obviously, this is the thing. My position is that Ahsoka is shit. Mando seasons at least two and three are shit. Um... You know what I mean? So I'm a little bit confused on the separation, I suppose. I imagine you take issue with Kenobi and Boba Fett because of how badly they represent the characters and like the damage to the world building, which is yes. exactly how I feel about Ahsoka. Yes. Um, you, you know, felt, like Thrawn. You, you felt that with Ahsoka? Yeah, like, how did you guys feel about Thrawn? Um, he's kind of a pussy. <laughs> yeah, okay. we didn't, we Could didn't have been get better. a whole lot of him, yeah. Yeah. He wasn't so, like, like I, how he was in Heir to the Empire at all. A lot of our fans were really excited because they were like, Thrawn, that's the guy who can tie this together. He can finally bring a point to the enemies. He can make them stronger again because 
we've been dealing with stupid stormtroopers and stupid commanders now for what feels like the entire tenure of uh, Disney Star Wars. It'd right. be nice to have someone competent finally. Because I don't yeah. know if you guys know, but even Ryan, when he was writing TLJ, said that when he took Hux from TFA, he was like, this guy's just so funny. He's such a funny character. I can't wait to like do funny things with him. Oh it's just like, I don't, I don't even know. Like Some of the thoughts what? he has, you know, he's already got there. But Thrawn, we were fascinated by. I'd never seen a character that loses so often and recontextualizes every loss as actually I'm winning. Yeah. It's the most embarrassing thing ever. And of course, we have, we're not as invested in the um, the expanded stuff before they got decanonized anyway. Mm -hmm. the, the Thrawn had this reputation, and so we were excited to kind of see him. He was often sold to us as the Tywin of Star Wars, Tywin Lannister. Mm -hmm. um, and then we saw that, and we were like, what the hell is this? Like, <laughs> And of course, right. everyone was like, they've ruined him. They've absolutely fucking ruined him. Yeah. And, you know, and that's gone now. Yeah. And it's a Filoni creation. He's He's taken a character, and he's I'm afraid, like, I don't know how else to put it, but he can't write a competent leader. No, he didn't. Well, I feel like he did that very well with Balin, but then, like, he built his story well, and then what happened the last two episodes? We just completely didn't even focus on them. Um, I That's the thing. That's why I said Ray Stevenson rather than Balin. I'm not actually, I don't fully understand Balin as a character, and there's a couple of decisions he made in the season that I find very odd, like, mm -hmm. especially Ahsoka in relation to him, right? Like, do you remember... When she's coming in to save her friends, but she instead has Hu Yang drop her pretty much right next to Balin, even though she doesn't want to be near him, she wants yeah. to be with them. Yeah, it's like what what's that gonna? And then she sinks with Hu Yang for him to fire like flares so that she can escape the fight with Balin. Yeah, I don't understand any of that. That was that was really strange. And it's like, well, it's because they wanted them to have a rematch. And it's like a rematch where both of them stop fighting. I think where she realized in that moment that he is way beyond her, and she can't win. So why why does she want to fight him in the first place? No, she hubris. She thought she could win, but she's got friends to save. Do you think that's out of character? She feels that if she takes out the big one, then her friends can handle the little one. Well, they're currently he wasn't even involved in the fight. They're currently fighting another lightsaber wielder and several. What is it like fifty stormtroopers or something? Thirty twenty. I'm not like disagreeing with you. I think that she should have gone and helped her friends, <laughs> just like uh, okay, you know. Um, I mean, even the prequels, we can make so many of these arguments, but it's the way they wrote it. But I, I, so I'm trying to understand it in the form mm -hmm. that why would she would make these decisions? But well, so I'm obviously arguing that these are all the decisions that make up the course of the episodes. And as far as I'm concerned, the characters are not being properly represented. They are pulling out lightsabers. They are using the force. They are Jedi. They are you know, dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, you get those elements of Star Wars. And I understand a lot of people get me completely wrong. If I was building Star Wars, I don't want it to be just like Andor forever or something. It's like, I'm more than happy to have spectacular lightsaber battles. A lot of my favorites are from the prequels. I think they're fucking great. I just wish there was more character behind a lot of them. You know what I wish is if we could have the level of care that was put into Andor for the character development. Bingo. The yes score the cinematography which completely shat on kenobi and Boba, mm -hmm. and the acting and cadence and everything and combine that with jedi <laughs> you know and force yeah. users i think that that to me would be and heck maybe that's going to be acolyte as much as i do not like the things that leslie headland has said i don't know uh, surprise me you know but until we get it We'll yeah, know. no, I'm with you completely. I want, I want, I want the whole package as well. But that, that's the have... thing is that I've I've always mentioned that about Andor is that it is a very well made show. Uh, it, it has everything that you would want in a show, but for a Star Wars show, I want something a little more geared towards the Jedi and the Sith or Force users or things like that because or aliens simply, and droids, right? Or sim simply because we haven't gotten that yet with with Disney all that much. And if people want to argue the sequel trilogy, well, I mean, look, those movies were half baked, if that, and they were ass. I mean, it's literally what destroyed the fandom. And if people want to argue that, well, I mean, we can argue it all day, no problem. But I feel a massive void that I haven't, I have not received yet the feeling that I had when I was a kid. And that's not because I was a child and everything was la di da, amazing, sunshine and rainbows. It's because that the actual whole, entire feeling of Star Wars has shifted to the point where it's not so much about the story or these characters that George built or even even really the cadence that he had everything uh, develop story-wise and character-wise. It's more so about politics and agendas and killing off the past, literally, so that they can bolster their new characters and 
look, they kill off Han. They turned Han into an absolute loser. <laughs> yeah. And he was literally a general at the end of it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Turn him into a deadbeat father. Kill him off. He's gone. Luke Skywalker, kill him off. He literally was the biggest, excuse my term of language here, bitch I've ever seen. Runs off instead I mean, of I'm facing... A coward. Yeah. Complete coward. And, yep. and instead of facing what he needed to and protecting his sister and the galaxy, completely just runs away. Why? Because of his, his nephew had some dark thoughts. Well, his father l killed literally young <laughs> No, yeah, and, we're on the same page. Yeah, absolutely. It, so, so it's like, to, to me, I'm like, they destroyed all these characters, and then they, they BB-8 is the new R2. Uh, it's, they're just putting in all of these new characters to replace the old Ray to take Luke's place. It's just, to me, like, they've shat on everything. So it's like, I, I don't have this feeling of... Yeah, I want to continue to watch Disney Star Wars. No, I mm -hmm. don't. You pissed me off. You disrespected me and the characters that I cared about so much. And now to the point where I don't like you anymore. I don't care much about the new Star Wars because it's all made by a bunch of people that don't really have the emotional understanding of who these characters are and what they mean to people. They just want to interject their own bullshit and politics and agendas in there and look where it's gotten them. The stock is absolute garbage now. Well, yeah, are you guys as familiar with Marvel? Because same thing's happening. Same destruction. Yeah, yeah. I, I stopped yeah. watching. I stopped watching mm -hmm. after the Avengers. <laughs> Good time to stop. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, yeah, I just I was I tried. I just wasn't interested anymore. You know, um, I'm like, eh, not for me. So on the topic of um, being in a desert and Filoni is providing you at least a bottle of water, and that's enough to absolutely praise him. If that Gilroy to me is providing a bit of a is a hotel with a pool in the middle of the desert, okay. and so. What we need, at least from what I'm gathering from you guys, is we need to edge Gilroy into please involve a bit of Vader, a bit of Tarkin, a bit of whatever in your in your era. If you make some more Star Wars, you know, involve more of the Star Wars aesthetic, the iconography. Yeah, that to me seems like much more of an achievable goal than hoping Filoni will stop writing someone like Thrawn like a cowardly idiot. <laughs> yeah, and I I like your analogy of the hotel with a pool in the desert, but for me it's like a hotel <laughs> in the pool with a desert without any amenities in terms of uh, uh there's no food there's no chef there's no workers there it's just an abandoned sort of hotel with a pool with some murky water and and yes i mean in the desert that's amazing but at the same time um i want the full five-star experience i that's agree the for. hotel so let's order in the amenities points. right we'll, yeah. we'll grab gilroy tell him hey we need yeah. some lightsabers, need yeah. some Vader, need some Anakin, whatever. Yeah. Get it all in you. Well, Meanwhile, I think that's so much more possible than with what we have with Filoni. But the thing is, and, and this is a common misconception people make about me, is that he only wants Vader and Anakin. I don't. I'd much rather have a story from the Old Republic or a story with a new villain who actually makes sense and is actually imposing. Um, but, you know, we're not getting that. So I, I don't need to see Anakin all the time. We've seen a lot of him and... Um, Quite frankly, I'm worried if they're going to do any more with him, they would ruin him like they did with Kenobi and Boba. There's also a weird thing about that hotel with a pool in the desert making Star Wars and saying while he's making Star Wars that he forgot he was making Star Wars while he was making Star Wars. Well, do we know the a, context for why he said that? Why? I, I Being immersed in Star Wars while you're making Star Wars is a is a different thing. I just think that, and this isn't me saying that everybody who makes star Wars needs to be the biggest fan of star Wars. Everybody needs, there's that whole Kevin yes, Feige they do. interview. Well, yes, they do. They need to be fans. Right. Yes, they but do. I just, as much as how much does Tony Gilroy really know about star Wars? I don't know. It seems like from interviews that he doesn't really know as every time yeah, okay. he was interviewed, he was like, eh, yeah, star Wars is cool, but I'm making this. Yeah. So it's just a, it's just an interesting point of view when I think why people cling to Filoni so much is a lot of times people argue that when when we watch something like Ahsoka or whatever comes out or that episode with Luke and Book of Boba Fett, which Mahler, I would love to hear your takes on just because that was all <laughs> CGI and that, I get as you would say that's all Skinwalker Luke that was a oh, whole yeah. episode of him absolutely. Um, but I think with Filoni, the stuff that he makes a lot of times is compared to as the most like George Lucas Star Wars since George Lucas a lot of times. So when people give you that feeling, and there's a bunch of different ways why it can feel like that, it's just, it's different when you see something like Andor, which I, I didn't mind Andor either. I, I actually enjoyed Andor for what it was. 
It's just Andor felt more like a short story from one of the a certain point of view books made into an entire series when something like Kenobi and the other shows don't get the same quality experience. So I think that's where a lot of the disdain for something like Andor comes from is in terms of that quality. Why isn't it being shared across the board? Um, And then there's something like that's not even just in quality of the way the the show is made or the films are made. Because theory, we were talking about it earlier of The Last Jedi, you could say it looks like a really good movie, but is it a good movie? Star Wars movie and it, it's that differentiation. Differentiation. Well, you you of, remember the uh, the trailers that were coming out for the Last Jedi? I mean, th- those are yeah. some of the most hyped times. Oh, that was Star Wars yeah, that was hyped. As yeah, well. yeah, dude. Every trailer was better. Oh my god, um, what do they have? Like eighty million views, something like that. It's, yeah, the Star know? Wars fandom was ready and yeah. they yep. fumbled the ball completely. Um, yeah. uh, is it I call you Diamond or Diamond Figs or Figs? Either. You can call me Will or whatever, or Mustache Will, Guy right. or whatever um, you want. Mustache Guy. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> Uh, I understand what you're saying, but like, would you would you say there's any damage was done to Star Wars as a as an IP as a brand as a as a series on time and space thanks to Andor? Any damage? I yeah, in terms of the fandom split of, hey, everything needs to be like Andor now, or no, it can't be like Andor now. I think there's a big separation in the fandom of the Andor story and. When Andor was made, the story was so it was a it was a different story than what we've seen in Star Wars, not only in recent years, but I think in general. And I mean, you can take the the piecemeals of the hero's journey and all of that stuff. It, it felt very different than a lot of sto- Star Wars in a lot of ways. Um, maybe that's just because of the Star Wars we were given it being so different. But I think the fandom split in such a way of it's either all going to be Andor or it's all going to be what we know to be star wars recently um and i think that's that's a big damaging thing of hey not all star wars there's always that argument of hey not all star wars needs to be lightsabers but it's nice when you see a lightsaber in star wars right it's Mm -hmm. nice when you get some force it's nice when you get characters you know um and like i said earlier it's it's like a a story that you take from one of those point of view a certain point of view books about the guy who was pushing the button in the rebel base on Hoth. And it's cool that you get his point of view, but in terms of live action star Wars, when what we've gotten from Disney for so long is the sequel trilogy. And obviously everything is controversial in terms of star Wars. Now Mahler, you don't like Mando season one or two, and there's other stuff and people like Ahsoka and people don't. And I think the only thing people can really agree on nowadays is tales of the Jedi. Um, so I think when it comes to that, it's just the split is there. And I don't know if, if that unity is going to come back. I mean, a, a lot of unity came from Tales of the Jedi. I, I can't I've never heard anybody talk poorly about Tales of the Jedi. I don't know. I don't know what your stance on it, Mauler, is. Uh, well, so I was actually going to say, like, I was looking for more of an internal argument because I actually I do buy what you're saying, that there's, um, there's a contingent if, of Andor fans that are aggressive and annoying. That question um, Yep. If we take the fandom, because people will like and dislike everything uh, from what I've noticed, if we take the whole fandom idea out of uh, what they, their perception of Andor out of the picture, then no, Andor only adds to the lore and adds to the overall story um, in okay. a really beautiful way. So where cool. I was obviously going to go with that is as far as I'm considered it, and I, I think you guys would not be on board with this, then Filoni has done more damage to Star Wars than Gilroy has. Filoni definitely has more under his belt of I good. I mean, you're, you're looking at someone who's like a, a one for one in making a show that has new characters that nobody in relatively speaking cares about compared to the legendary characters of Anakin or Vader or Ahsoka. Um, even Ahsoka is a new, new one in there compared to Anakin and Vader. So really there is so much less at stake with Andor when you're creating something like that. That's a completely new project where you know, the characters are going to die anyways. Um, compared to someone who is under the immense pressure of continuing already established characters like Vader or Anakin or Obi-Wan or Ahsoka. So I think there's a 
you, you can't really phrase it like that, who has done more damage. I, I don't think Dave Filoni has... I think Dave Filoni's trying to put pieces back together from what's been destroyed by a much larger enemy, which is Disney. Would you um, categorize Thrawn that way? Yeah, categor- categorize him how? That he's an attempt to repair what Dave Filoni did with Thrawn. Mm. I don't know if people in the star wars story group or people making star wars necessarily see things as when they make something it's a repair <laughs> on star wars i don't think the story group really is exactly you know what i mean these days. it's like uh, i think you know they're more worried about their their whiteboard that's behind them um yeah than telling uh, star wars stories but uh yeah For with the... with thrawn i i not everything's perfect, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to now look at stuff that I can let slide, which isn't much, but also look at things that really progress the story with, eh, okay, it's as good as it can be, but I'm looking at it in that frame. It's like you have a keyboard. Like we're just looking at this section here. There's an entire other set of keys. We're just looking at this right now, and so I can talk to you about how well I think these keys sound, mm-hmm. but obviously if we go you know, down the board over there, it's going to sound much better, but we don't have that option. We're stuck with this. Um, like it, it, just so I can clarify, cause from my point of view, that sounds like a very um, like it doesn't sound very uh, praiseworthy of Filoni's works. It sounds more like, well, what else are we gonna do? I mean, I think, if, we had, if we had George yeah. Lucas and Dave was making this, I would be like, well, it's not George. At the end of I the mean, day, that's it's kind of it's yeah. kind of why I'm offering that Gilroy would be the better pathway. We can push him into making Star Wars stuff. He seems to, I don't know if you guys knew this. I blew my mind when I found out about this. He, um, when the COVID stuff hit, you know, mm-hmm. production stopped on Andor. Mm-hmm. And so he had time where he couldn't do anything. And he decided, well, I guess I'm going to redraft all these scripts, which he did. Now, I don't know if you know, but Disney's current sort of approach with script writing is abominable. Um, mm-hmm. I assume you guys might know that, but the Boba Fett episode of season two of Mando, it was yep. provided to, um, Oh, why am I forgetting his name? The guy who made uh, Grindhouse Favreau. with uh, Tarantino, not not quite Favreau, the the oh. director of the episode, Robert Rodriguez. Oh, he yeah. um he was given seventeen pages, I think he said, and the every part of the fighting just said fight. They they, they you know they're they're just like go for it, just make the episode. Boba Fett's in it. Let's go. It's like they only care about it from a and I I use this not to offend, but the key jangling aspect. It's like we got to get Boba Fett in. Got to get us. Remember, Soka joined through Mando season two into the live action stuff and they splintered out into two different TV shows. Yeah. Off of Mando. Right. That was their goal. And look what we got. For sure. That was their goal. They're, they're kind of diluting it in a sense by rushing out these projects or just not handling it properly as best as they could. But the whole they fight part, I mean, George did that with episode three when he was writing the script in the B- BTS. There was just literally scripts and scripts and scripts pages. And then Nick it's just Hillard. they fight. But you know, <laughs> probably better than I do, that they took great care with the fight sequences in the prequels. Oh my god, I mean, you had yeah. Nick Gillard, which... Yeah. Why they don't hire him? I mean, they're idiots. And that's the thing, if they did that in their production now, which for some reason they don't understand the value of that, uh, obviously they lose in that aspect, and that's chipping away at the entire sort of... Well, I mean, it's, it's rubble now, but you know what I mean, the temple is gone. Oh yeah, when, when the show was airing, I was literally sending clips to I was texting it to him, and we had a discussion about the choreography and everything and mm-hmm. uh why they don't use him i don't know man they're just shooting themselves in the foot um you said uh earlier i don't know because i remember seeing it in the clip as well that you consider tlj a bad star wars film but a good film i was curious to uh pick at that what do you consider good about it the budget the uh the score <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, you know what I agree with you on cinematography. That one, yeah. You know that's sure. about it. That's the marketing. It. The, the what? The, the marketing. marketing. <laughs> the, yeah, the the marketing. Yeah, the marketing was absolutely phenomenal. But besides that, no. You know. Yeah. That's that's about it, right? I mean, to me, that's a shit movie, right? Like visuals are strong, cinematography, maybe the soundtrack, but that's about it. It's yeah, like thirty percent. Transformers visuals are strong too. You know. <laughs> well, you think Transformers is good? No. Yeah, so uh, no. we agree, right? No, no. TLJ is a shit movie. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Good God. Of course. Okay. Yeah, but, but, Waller know, like, got real worried. <laughs> no, but I'm, for I'm saying every movie nowadays has good visuals because you're just like, oh, just, we'll, we'll do this VFX, we'll do that VFX, you know? But it's... Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and Disney have managed to find a way to make anything over 50 million look like piss now. 
Yep. I don't even know how they could they pulled Which it off, but they episode found a way. four, I think, was thirty million, so was it forty million, something like that? I mean, and it's purely just story. But also, you know, episode episode four came out when uh, did I say episode seven or episode four? Episode four. Episode four. yeah, episode four came out in a time when it was like the most fresh thing that could. Now you have you know space movies coming out of the yin yang, so it's not as special anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Baller, um, to your point yeah. about Tony Gilroy with pushing him towards, look, if he wants to make more Star Wars, uh, I'm excited for Andor Season 2. I'm interested to see what they do. I mean, it's more Star Wars. I didn't mind Andor Season 1, but to push him towards making more Star Wars versus Filoni, where you say, I to for lack of better terms, Filoni has produced more L's than Tony Gilroy's one W, in your opinion. Uh, to it's me, a long it, W, though. Yeah, it can, a, a full season W in Mahler's opinion. But like, I would compare that to one guy, a, a new rookie basketball player who has won a championship versus trying to bet on LeBron James. Well, you, you know what I mean, Jordan LeBron? J- or yeah, and for I, I mean, am I saying Filoni is the LeBron James of Star Wars? No, no well, I don't know well, basketball. Right. But um, <laughs> what I'm saying is, somebody, a player who has won championships and games and produced a lot, who LeBron James has lost games. However, Tony Gilroy, who has had one long W, does that mean I don't think he's going to have a more promising career than Dave Filoni? No, I hope the best for Tony Gilroy. If Tony Gilroy wants to make Star Wars the best thing since 1977, mm-hmm. fuck yeah, I'm all in. But I think it's just hard to put your money... I don't know. For me, I would rather have the LeBron James stuff than the new guy who's just won once because at this point... If yeah. I'm if I'm a better, my money's better spent on the guy who has produced more W's as well as the L's, just because he's had the opportunity to, versus the guy who's only had one opportunity and so if had I a can um, shot. offer an alternate perspective, uh, if someone said new Alien movies coming out, Alien, Re- I was about to say Resurrection, they already did that, <laughs> Alien, uh, some <laughs> tagline, yeah, uh, Alien, Alien Erection, next, Alien Erection, <laughs> hey, like, who do you want directing and writing, and on the table right there is Ridley Scott, you can choose him, I'd be like, hell no, keep him the hell away from Alien, he'd be like, whoa, he made Alien, it's like one of the greatest films of all time, and it's the series foundation, I'd be like, that man, whatever made him create something as great as Alien is gone, and by the way, the same goes for James Cameron and Terminator. Stay away. Yeah, he's, There's a good he's chance. completely changed. Yeah, that yeah. guy's a whack job now. And so I suppose the question from that would be, how many Mando season threes slash Ahsoka season ones, episodes seven and eights, would you guys need to see before you say, okay, enough, Filoni, stay away from Star Wars? Well, Probably the ratio, one more. The ratio one more? would have to... <laughs> The ratio would have to be kind of equal to yeah. the wins that they've had, right? So we have all these Clone Wars episodes and we have uh, Tales of the Jedi and this and that. So it's like, you know, am I going to tolerate a couple episodes that to me were like, that's it? Uh, in comparison to his long, illustrious career that he's had? Yeah, sure. I'll tolerate it. But I'm still keeping tabs now. I'm with you completely. There are, there are creators that I think go up and down. There's um, one of my favorite creators currently working is Mike Flanagan. And yet I'm very critical mm. of a lot of the stuff that he makes because I, I want him at his best. But yeah, uh, there's a there's a discipline. There's an attitude that I try to detect from creators. And I don't know that I should ever consider their entire work rather than maybe their recent sometimes. Because Ridley Scott, yes. of course, I should consider he made Alien. It's like, oh, I don't know, man. That was like, what? <laughs> 40 plus years, years ago. ago. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's complicated. And then, of course, there are creators that have lost their minds. All these creators that were awful and then have since made something that was kind of impressive. I know a lot of people were like, why would I watch a film about Joker from the guy who made Hangover? What's the point yeah. of that? And then you watch and you go, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's, yeah. he's cooking, as the kids say. Yeah. I would go as far as saying <laughs> that I'm interested. Like, I'll still give uh, Filoni, Favreau. I'll even give JJ and Ryan chances. I always want to. Uh, not me personally, as in like if if Disney feel that that Ryan Johnson trilogy ever actually got made, which would be a huge mistake. If they did, I would still be like, all right, I'm going to give him another chance. Here we go. But I would still tell you guys I have no confidence in his ability because of how familiar I am with Ryan Johnson's writing discipline. I don't know if you've seen Knives Out, Looper, or uh, Glass Onion. Yeah, I, I didn't like Knives I, Out. I recognize how he writes, and I know that <laughs> whatever he's going for is in trouble. Now with 
uh, let's take uh, Gilroy for example. I don't because we haven't talked at all about like what I liked about uh, Andor, and I'd love to hear what you guys liked about it as well, right? But mm. I thought that show over the it was ten episodes, right? It was building up. Or was it 12? twelve? Sorry, twelve. Yeah, it was. It was building 12. up um, the Empire again. It recreated. It created this like uh, you know council right. that were very much built on like investigation, individual bodies, information passing through, and then actually like definitive action and subversion and moles. I was like, holy shit, this is like yeah. a whole functioning thing. Because right. like, I assume you guys remember with TFA, they wanted to do away with anything connected to that because they were so afraid of like what happened with the prequels. Like people were like, oh, politics. We hate politics, which yeah. was one of the most... Yeah, I don't, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I feel like Red Light Media did a lot of damage to uh, <laughs> Star Wars by targeting certain aspects of the prequels that I don't think were the problem at all. I'm yeah. not a huge fan of those guys' videos. I am. Oh, oh, there you go. They're creators that I am both happy with and critical of and hope yeah. for the best in going forward. But yeah, yeah with Andor... Filoni. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so <laughs> with that, you know, that council idea, I was like, okay, that's cool. They're building up, um, like, Luthan Rail is one of my favorite Star Wars characters at this point, like, epitomizing okay. the conflict that is, like, what decisions are you willing to make in order to win the war when we don't right. see a lot of that in, in a lot of Star Wars content. A lot of the times the characters are strict good, strict evil uh, or pass through each one. There's, there's, we don't, in the live actions, we haven't had a lot of examples, and I'd love to see more of it, characters that have conflict in terms of, like, uh, exactly where they stand. I feel like Count Dooku was oh. a really great um, opportunity to get through that in, with more of the live action stuff, and maybe we'll get Count more of that Dooku, in the future. Mace Windu, Anakin, I mean, more of, yeah, characters that have I feel like we didn't get to see a lot of that in live action, um, where, where it would be really fun to, I want to explore loads of the Separatist stuff, you know, again. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is, like, I see all of this potential in Gilroy's writing. I lo I love the whole prison sequence. I don't know if you guys have felt about it exactly. Like the four episode arc for the. I really the enjoyed. That was probably where it started to pick up for me. The uh the idea that like all of it is representative of how rebellions overthrow like fascist sort of regimes, and uh, mm -hmm. I'll never get over like the 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 prisoners swimming out of the facility that has the Empire cog is showing yeah. the Empire bleeding as a result of all of yes. their actions that goes down to the individuals. Like that's really cool. It was so. I see all that potential. Then I watch Ahsoka, and I'm spending most of the episodes wondering who Ahsoka, Hera, and um, Sabine are. Still waiting for more information uh, from his point of view in this story, because uh, Filoni sold this as you don't even need to see Clone Wars and Rebels. This show will take care of you. It's going to make sure you understand. And um, I think one of the worst is Hera looking back. Her story was insanely thin, and she was given she was given like barely anything, except that she's kind of a bullheaded general that doesn't understand how procedure works, and then right. she commits perjury, and she's bailed out by a corrupt government being the quote-unquote good guys. Yeah. What we saw Leia do with Hera, first of all, doesn't even make sense. It's not in line with Leia's character. She wouldn't bail out good guys on a mission where two people died that was not sanctioned just because they're her friend. Mm -hmm. That's not how that works. Mm -hmm. It's not a responsible general. But, you know, more importantly, it's representative to me of like, oh, that's not handling... You know, character journeys well, and I feel like that's represented. We could go through it all, but I don't want to waste all you guys' time. Of each of the that's characters, that's what we're here to do, man. To to chat, have fun. Well, if, uh, ask me any questions you want if you want. So, like any individual character journey, any individual the, the overall plot, the world obviously thrown the witches of Dathomir. Mm -hmm. I assume I don't know if you guys were fan of zombie stormtroopers. That no, shit. no, I'm not. okay. That's did you not see my face? <laughs> I mean, it's been clipped into oblivion now on Twitter and stuff, and it's just like. Uh... <laughs> I was not expecting them to be just zombies. That's it. And so that this, was the climax. If it were the one season, I'd be like, "All right, look, he missed. It's okay. He he can miss." But then I'm combining that with my knowledge of how he approached, you know, a lot of the content in Mando or a lot of the content that he al clearly allowed to happen somewhat in Kenobi and Boba Fett. And I'm just like, this yeah. is not the guy for the job, as far as I'm concerned. Meanwhile, Gilroy, I can see the uh, the uh, the the discipline is there. We just need him to, you know. I think it's it's almost a guarantee we'd be getting Vader in season two of Andor, right? It would make sense. It would make sense. Krennic, you know. Krennic, yeah. Um, there's a couple of characters. We, uh, K2SO will probably pop up, but not for that's sure. obviously Disney canon. But at the same time, you understand, like, um, there's no reason to assume that uh, it would be as disconnected. And if it is more connected, if the pacing ramps up. I feel like that is then earning Gilroy a position of like, maybe he should be given more. Um, and maybe we could test him out in a little bit more. What if we Dragon Ball fuse Favreau, Filoni, Gilroy, <laughs> and Wit were all into one? If we can get uh, Gilroy writing and Filoni supervising? 
yeah. slash directing maybe and and Whitwer even do I I really have yeah Whitwer in there yeah that's yep. uh, Um Kathleen's not allowed in to the nope. room that's, uh, <laughs> big old lock on there for dude no girls allowed <laughs> <laughs> the He Man Woman clip club. there's a clip there's a clip folks there you go yeah, Twitter go, go clip for it. it yeah they're gonna do it anyways just more <laughs> marketing for me man Thank you. that's basically my point of view yeah no and I respect your point of view and I say I'd agree with over ninety percent of your point of view. All right. I, fact, honestly, I, really I got a completely I, I, different impression of what your point of view was uh, before this conversation. Yeah, most do. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, most to be fair, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wasn't it all interesting in any slander though? Because, like, to take for example, yeah. one of your quotes is saying they gave penny, they gave pennies to Kenobi, right? Yeah. The very wild thing to say because 90 million is a hell of a lot more than some of the greatest TV shows of all time ever got. Oh, in comparison to Andor or uh, She Hulk. Fuck. She Hulk. Is that pennies in comparison? Um, For a show that is arguably the most important show for Star Wars, I would imagine if, if She Hulk has 250 or 225 and or has 250, then I would hope that Kenobi would double that. Well, like so, Andor had double the episodes, and they were longer, and the they went to more places in the galaxy, right? So, it like, it would be a call for more money, at least. I guess I don't even want to focus on that. I would just be more at the point of being like, we could have had an incredible Kenobi show for one million dollars. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, a fan film. It's just all about writing. But it's like where we went with Andor was because of the writing. Where we went or didn't go with Kenobi was because of the writing. So we could have gone a ton more places. We could have gone to Dagobah, different planets, Coruscant, wherever we need to go in Kenobi, but they chose to just keep it so safe and yeah, didn't spend um, a, a single cent on a gimbal, you know, and it just made <laughs> like... And like the focus of um, my corner of the internet is just again and again, writing, writing, writing quality, care about the characters, care about the lore, consider continuity, cause and effect. It's all really important. And of course, throw in uh, the iconography. I'm more than happy to have that. Um, and like, you know, when I watched your video, you were saying like, what the fuck? Like the big, you know, sticking point for you was the fact that She-Hulk got more money than Kenobi. And I'm just sitting yeah. there like, I mean, even if it had the same budget, it would be crap. It would have been like because of their approach. Well, and that's what I said in the video, that the budget isn't even the main issue. It's the writing. It's the writing. Yeah. 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 I literally but said like it's, a few minutes in. It's uh, It pushed you over the edge, though, looking at the um. It did. The it, it totally did. Because I was just like, you know what, man? Like, it, it the the show itself felt so cheap, and it felt like we have this this very narrow, uh, what's the word when people have an issue with tight spaces? Claustrophobic, Claustrophobic. feel uh -huh. to it. Uh, whereas you know you get Kenobi or She Hulk, and it's like, every or, or uh, Andor and She Hulk, where everything feels so expansive, and so wide, and so great. Yeah, Andor felt so much, not only as a production, but just watching it, it felt so no, much bigger than Kenobi. It, it made me jealous. Massive. It, it, felt, yeah. it felt like Star Wars in that sense, where you're going to different planets and different worlds, and you're seeing them from the outside, from space, and then you go to them, and it, it, the sets, everything was just large and wide and, and big. Yeah, but I agree, with... and I honestly think it's the, the cinematographers and the, the people involved, like, uh, they may have gotten more time. I think Kenobi was super rushed, right? Yeah, well, but it was supposed, that's I mean, they not had an excuse. For, no, they had the idea. No, that's bad. Years. That's what I'm saying. It's not even budget at that point. It's because this is what Marvel's going through. Everything, every project doesn't have enough time to cook, basically. And uh, they're obviously, they want to have a schedule where you bounce from Star Wars to Marvel to Star Wars to Marvel. Like they yeah. want you to keep busy, which is obviously killing them at this point. And they're yep. struggling to start to pull the brakes and refigure. You guys probably saw it. They announced recently they want to start having showrunners for their shows. Yeah. Wait, what? For they Marvel. want to start having showrunners for their TV show. The the the, re, the revelation that, that, that you should have a showrunner. What does that mean? That the, they haven't been doing that up to this point. They've been using directors and writers and just throwing <laughs> the shit at them, being like, "Go, just make the thing." No showrunner, which is yep, insane. This is what I mean. Like I, the decisions in production are absolutely nuts. But um, because I, I don't know how much you guys know about this, I always assume that everyone does because of the how wild it all is. But like the the writer for. Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness like joyfully admitted in the behind the scenes that when they were filming like, they almost completed act two for filming he hadn't written anything for act yep. three he had no idea what it was going to be he was just insane. sitting there like insane he was like laughing like saying I don't know what even we're going to do <laughs> and it's just like that's that's wonderful that's because today movies aren't made with passion or to tell a story it's made to hit quotas that's it yeah and we yep. need 
yeah, we need a big U turn and we need to learn and remember like what what it is to be artists when it comes to filmmaking. And so that's why I feel like we line up on a hell of a lot, but it might be like the minutia perhaps that we it have. It is minutia, but it's also what the perception that the public who don't know me or don't watch my videos perhaps um, think of me that is constantly being um, broadcasted online in a, in a light that is less than favorable in my opinion. So it's it's who I am is, you know, how I conduct myself, but I feel like people who don't know me just kind of get an idea of who I am through other people who don't like me. Yeah, um, I'm right with you there, man. Like, even in the Super Chats that were sent to you, someone described me as, I want to debate you and I'm going to go from film school. I haven't been to film school. And I never said I wanted to debate you. I just wanted to chat with you after you put out the tweet. That's all. Oh, I love this chat. I, this yeah, is that's, that's, that's all I want. And, and... But, like, I don't blame you. When someone says that, you just be like, oh, shit. Like, is this guy okay. like, debate me, debate me? Just like, no. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I get that every day, man. There's just so many people that are constantly just talking shit. And it's like, yeah. Okay. Like, I'm just here talking about Star Wars, man. Like, not everyone's going to agree with me, I guess. But I didn't. I honestly had so much more fun with my channel when I was under 750,000 subscribers. That was the best. Best time. Best time. Well, and I, I assume you agree, but best time would have been when the content was fucking awesome. When the films coming out and they were amazing, we'd ah, all celebrate yeah. together and talk about how awesome the future was going to be. I remember speculating on what the things in TFA were going to lead to. Yeah. I can't imagine doing that now. No. It's, I'm just not as creative anymore. Not simply because the creativity is gone. I'm putting it into other aspects, but because it just, there's nothing to really pull from. It's like, where do you go after the end of TLJ? <clears throat> Yeah, the door. No, and, uh, and then, like, what? Uh, Ryan Johnson is a quote as saying that he wrote it to be an end. That's what he likes to do with his films. Yeah, well, it's just like thanks, bro. And that, that <laughs> this is the guy who's going to make the third one over there. But yeah, 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 yeah. And what he said about uh, how he's like, you know, I, I think a film where half the audience really hates it and half the audience really loves it, you know, that to me is that's a really good film. I feel like you never hear that from someone who made a film that everyone loved. <laughs> like, <laughs> nobody says, like, man, I wish more people hated my movie. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, that's a really great way of kind of uh, setting, your up, setting yourself up to never kind of fail. It's like, well, that's what I wanted. I wanted them to hate them. Oh, well, all right. You got your wish. You succeeded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you win. Well, on that note, I want to know this is you guys' show, so I should probably hop out. Um, but no, you can plenty stay as of fun. long as you like. I really enjoyed your, I mean, you, um, your time. You guys have an itinerary from what I understand, right? And I, I think you even mentioned like bringing someone on randomly. I didn't want that to happen, by the way. I was just curious if uh, that's how it worked or not. Yeah, it's very free form here. On uh, That's how I've always wanted these live streams to be. Just no real schedule and just shoot the shit. So I really enjoyed my time and I'd love for you to come back again if you want. Well, yeah, hit, uh, hit me up if you want to. Um, Anything Star Wars related, Star Wars news? I mean, I'd love to tell you all about how horrible Marvel is. That's almost my expertise along with Marvel. Uh, sorry, Star Wars at this point. <laughs> it's a, all of it's a disaster. It's sad, but that we're hoping that the corner's being turned, so to speak, sort of. There's a lot of different things happening, and Disney's desperate at this point, as I'm yeah. sure you're aware. Uh, the yes. Marvels is going to be a big hitter because it's going to that's going to crash and burn. I don't even yeah. know what it's about. It's it's the the females, the female superheroes. Yes, uh, two of them from sort of spin-off shows that no one saw. So, <laughs> you know, it, uh, very wise decisions. As wise as the decisions they make for Star Wars, of course. Would you say, would you say Marvel is more in danger or Star Wars? It's really hard to, because I've been asked this question before, mm. but Marvel has, let's just say for the sake of argument, 50 characters, huge plot lines, a world that's enormous. And uh, we were asked on our podcast back like five years ago, you know, do you think Marvel's going to be destroyed? And we were like, no, you'd have to destroy every single character, you have to destroy <laughs> all of the plot lines, and you have to kill the world entirely. We have been covering every single entry into phase four and five. They have destroyed oh, every single character. They have annihilated all the remaining plot lines. They are struggling right now to know whether or not they recast or get rid of Kang. The only thing they've set up in five years it's like it's it's absolutely insane. They don't. They're like maybe we should bring in Doctor Doom. It's the equivalent of uh, how I see Ahsoka. It's like let's just bring in Thrawn. Let's get him in. Right. Hopefully this can re revitalize Star and then Wars. They it's just like, make him different. It's like uh. Right. Well, Kang's been embarrassing. He was defeated by ants. Ant Man. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Is that god. what happened? I didn't watch. Don't, don't watch it. Don't, don't. Don't. I didn't. You know when I saw Kang at the end of Loki season one, I was like. 
I don't even remember who. I was like, what's okay? Like Thanos was cool. Do you know, a quote they had was that he was ready for the role because he trained professionally as a clown. What? Okay. Jonathan Majors had professional clown training, and that's why he was ready for the role. So, what's going on with him now? Is he being arrested, or what? Like, uh, I think that's to be determined. Are they, um, yeah, they're going in? to trial. Yeah. Oh, okay. And of so course, if he's found him? guilty, Disney lose him. If he's found innocent, then Disney are confused. They're not sure what to do with him. They'll probably still lose him because it's just too much. There was uh, a while that I think there was going to be a counter sue against the person who was suing him or something. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah. What are you guys' hope for uh, Star Wars going forward? Where do you want to see it go? Where do I want to see it go? Um, Kathleen Kennedy to step down. I'd like for someone to take the reins. I mean, Kevin Feige, I don't really know how well he's going to do with Star Wars, but I think he does have a good understanding of how to kind of take, you know, a timeline of events and maybe write them so that they make sense, like the sequel trilogy. Um, I would imagine he has a good understanding and basis of Star Wars and their characters and how they would act and react in certain moments, um, depending on how he writes them. But overall, I would like for them to just start fresh at this point, you know, Let's say I were to take the reins of Lucasfilm. The sequel trilogy would be gone. Um, that would be Legends. Decanonize, yeah. Decanonize. We would create a new sequel trilogy, which would be Dave Filoni's movie. And that would be under immense scrutiny as well. I would be looking at that thing with a, a magnifying glass. And not to say that I am anywhere near the level of Dave Filoni when it comes to writing Star Wars, but I think I have a generally pretty good idea about what I want, what I see. And again, I, I'm putting every single fraction of creativity that I have and um, everything that I kind of preach into my fan films. And those will be coming out soon and I, I know the world will see them and then they can judge for themselves. But I believe I truly have what it takes to create good Star Wars the way we were brought up with. And um, if I were to take over Lucasfilm, I would decanonize sequels. I would create a new sequel trilogy based on Pretty much events happening a few years after Return of the Jedi and perhaps even having a time jump in one of the episodes there um, so that we advance the story. Um, then I would make games galore, everything that we would need, you know, whether it's 1313 or, you know, a, a game about Darth Maul, a trilogy on young Palpatine and Darth Plagueis. Get some bounty hunter games going. What's that? Get some bounty hunter games going. Exactly. 13, yeah. 13. I'm so so surprised that we don't even have a Mandalorian game yet with all that buzz <laughs> that was coming out. It's like, you know. Yeah, uh, that's true. You know, like the Bounty Hunter. We had so many games under LucasArts. And we've got what? EA created Battlefront 2 2015. Battlefront, no, Battlefront 2015, Battlefront 2. Then they stopped the game. Yep. And we have Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor, which were great games. But there's still so much more that could be done. We could get Force Unleashed. We could get Force Unleashed 3. We could get a whole bunch of games that don't have to be canon. But again, if I were to take over Lucasfilm, or what I would want to happen is that we take all of the legends that was there when George was around, which is now gone, and just expand upon it and have fun with it. You know, I'd create oh, more shows. Oh, I missed all being fun. I'm with you on that. Yeah, I'd create more shows. Um, and that's the thing with Star Wars. I'm not a huge fan of shows other than Clone Wars because I feel like they just have a budget of, let's say, 12 episodes and they got to fill in certain gaps to keep the person coming back each week and to keep that subscription going. Whereas a movie, you sit down in two and a half hours or more or less, you're done. And then you got to wait for the next installment of the film, like the prequel trilogy and originals. So I w I'm more interested in movies than I am shows. Shows, obviously, for making content and watch parties, yeah, it's fun. Business-wise, fun, great. It's a plus. But at the end of the day, I'm more of a Star Wars fan than I want my, my channel to thrive. I could do other stuff. So I would really love for them to go back to making movies and putting our asses in the movie theater seat. And from there, I mean, we'll see where it goes. Let's try to nail those things down first. But essentially going back to what Star Wars was and then even starting something, you know, thousands of years in the past and thousands of years in the future, I think getting away from the whole Skywalker timeline would be not only refreshing, but needed. It's, a, it's something that almost kind of fatigued with this whole like you know the Boba Fett era the Mandalorian era it's all it's all within the same not even 100 years so Acolyte is kind of the first installment that we have of this or we're going to be going back 200 years or whatever it is but screw that let's go thousands of years back to a real royal time to a time when it was like Game of Thrones and that to me 
is much more interesting than anything else. So I'd probably put my focus on something like that, maybe even like a saga of the Old Republic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I love all those ideas. The only core difference between you and I was I would gut all of Disney. Everything's gone. All yeah, the makers gone. created there. Everything's no, I mean gone. all the creators, so... Oh, including dude, yeah, yeah, everybody that, including Filoni. <laughs> yeah, I would even consider gutting uh, Gilroy. Everything I want, clean house, new creators in. So, um, what's his face, James Gunn style? Uh, well, he's kept a couple of things that he likes, which is controversial <laughs> as hell for a lot of Marvel fans. Oh, sorry. Well, yeah, I guess DC. Marvel and DC fans. DC. It's, um, oh, right, Guardians. Yeah, yeah, right. Because yeah, the, the, a lot of his actors have come across from other things, and it's just like mm. the big controversial one, of course, is his, uh, I believe, wife. A lot of people, like, <laughs> she's in everything. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, I want it mentioned that uh, there are creators out there who bring back their uh, friends, and that we right. don't care. We're fine with it because they're yeah. such good actors. Funnily enough, Michael Rooker comes into loads of James Gunn projects. No yeah. one highlights that as a bad thing. Yeah, so yeah, because we love Michael Rooker. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. What was the movie with the evil Superman kid? I forgot. Uh, oh, Bright Bright Burn. Bright 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 Burn. Burn. I yeah, really enjoyed that actually. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Superman, you but evil, like I find it lame. Okay. <laughs> but okay. it could be done well. I'm not going to deny that. They're entertaining. They're popcorn munchers, you know. Mm -hmm. But what Anything... would you want to see with Star Wars going forward? So let me ask you the same question. Oh, I so we're decan everything from I guess twenty what is it twenty thirteen when the deal was made twenty twelve yeah. I forgot yeah every it's all gone no, we're decanonizing everything and we're recanonizing a bunch of stuff I'm more than happy for Force Unleashed to be canon I, I mm. really put that much of it like there, there's I think you highlighted prequels for example there's plenty of criticisms we can levy we can talk all day about the the sort of failings of it mm -hmm. but I think the prequels and this is something the sequels can't claim they created a, such a strong Star Wars culture. Like they churn the fans around on all kinds of merchandise and engagement. A lot of people will tell you that it did the opposite mm -hmm. um, from videos that sort of recap history. They'll be like, the prequels practically annihilated Star Wars. And I'm just sitting there like, I was there, man. I don't, I don't think yeah. <laughs> it may have uh, skewered some of the current day fans, but it created an enormous set of new fans. Yes. A lot of people will pick the prequels over the OT. Meanwhile, How old are you, if I can ask? I'm 30. Oh, okay. So, so we're, we're around the same age. Yeah, yeah, and I saw uh, them as they really, I saw the OT when I was super young. Dad made sure of that. And then mm -hmm. the prequels, I adored them. I still adore them. I am probably more critical of them than you are, but that's, you know, we, I, I assume we can share a love on those. It's, uh... Oh, I can, I could rip anything apart, you know, but okay. at the same time, I'm just so. Uh... It's a podcast idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just no, dude, I, spend I the could, whole time talking about the prequels. I could, I could rip apart the prequels for sure, but at the same time, I just understand the characters, I, I think, so well that. I think that's kind of all I know for it. It, it just mm -hmm. doesn't, you know. Uh, yeah, but I mean, there are things that in each episode I could absolutely dissect and rip apart, but I've when, just never really done that. And that aspect, I think, has completely lost the ability to sort of, because uh, I remember playing all the games on like GameCube and stuff, and then yeah. just knowing you know the talks. And it's like there were three films across. It was 2000, well, 99, 2001, 2003, right? That was it. Yep. And look at, look at Disney Star Wars. They tried. 99, 2002, 2005. Oh, right, yeah. It's, it's even further, the gaps. That's what I'm yeah. highlighting, right? Like, the three-year three gap. Meanwhile, yeah. Disney confidently announced one Star Wars movie per year, and then that got ruined. <laughs> because as you highlighted with the TV shows, right, that they're like filler things that are supposed to keep us busy until the next big thing comes out. Right. I feel like the Solo movie was the first example of, oh, that didn't feel like an event. That felt like filler. That felt like a weird thing that no one wanted. That Absolutely. But, I don't because like again I say all this stuff and I'm like oh wait do you guys like solo or how, <laughs> how do you feel about the solo? Movie? Uh, no, I I mean solo to me was it was fine, but at the same time I have no uh, attachment to it whatsoever. I just, it's solo, uh, you know it's it's yeah. I just like seeing Darth Maul in it. That's about it. It's like it's <laughs> like if, a... if someone told me that they broke up with their girlfriends, like I'm not going to be feeling the pain they feel. I have no investment in their girlfriend. I don't have any emotions. It's the same sort of thing with Solo. It's like, it, okay, I'm impartial to it. It's a really good in-flight movie. Like, if it's on there, I might click on it. I probably wouldn't even click on it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was okay, but it wasn't anything. I mean, it, it, yeah, whatever. Well, um, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Is like that was their first realization of like, whoa, we can't marvelize Star Wars? And at that point, at this point, they can't even marvelize Marvel. Like, that's completely fucked. Um, mm -hmm. And so, like they the culture is almost like taking a break 
Star Wars is taking a break on, and that that might even be the best thing to do. A lot of people in my sphere sort of recommends like just stop, okay. don't make anything for like five years. You you guys need to make people be like, man, I miss Star Wars. Instead of being like, man, I guess I can watch the newest. What is it? Man, oh, season three. Okay. No, I disagree. If we get something that's totally Star Wars, everyone's going to be back on board. I mean, remember the energy after Mando season two? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know if uh, that's aged as well as let's take a lot of the other best stuff of the Star Wars sort of tenure. In the moment, it it was Star Wars was very hot. Well, maybe that's worth we talking about because uh, that might be another difference between us. I see that as hollow that mm -hmm. event at the end of Mando season two, and I saw it as like it's got no longevity mm -hmm. because there was nothing substantive. We can't talk about that moment like we can the end of Return of the Jedi. No, we almost. Can't, exactly, we could spend yeah. a whole podcast talking about that scene with Luke and Vader, but we can't do that with the end of Mando season two. No, it was just an action scene. It was a cool scene. That's all it was. But but it it led us into prospecting for more, theorizing for more, theorizing what could come, and that's what really had fans watering at the mouth. Like I the see, sequel I, trilogy, like the last Jedi when the trailers were out, people were like, "Holy shit, we're gonna finally see Luke! Like, what's he gonna be like? Oh my god!" Uh, yeah, and who Kylo was and what his journey was going to be, exactly. and, and you know Ray whose was. parents Ray. But like, where is all of that now? It's nobody cares. No, because they they ruined it. But if they had gone and actually continued that trajectory and that creativity, oh my God, we'd be in such a different place. If Kenobi was good, if Boba was, good, if Mando three was good, I mean, we'd be in a completely different headspace right now. The if thing I, um, that I see about like the OT and even the prequels is the sort of expression of like content that we're enjoying at the time engaged with we're getting payoff and we've got stuff to look forward to in the future mystery and reveals right. and stuff meanwhile the best disney seem to offer is only that part the mystique and i think people would see right through it at this point it's getting worse and worse like the half-life of the mysteries are getting worse and worse yeah, look at me yeah yeah i agree for sure but if they can if they can continue you know they give us like a really good meal and I keep taking it back to the food, but I, they give us a really good meal, and then they give us something that's you're like, what, what, what the fuck is this? I didn't order this. <laughs> but then they give you a really great dessert, and you're like, okay, it's, it's like, yeah, it's uh, I could explain it many other ways, but essentially that's what it's like. You're just constantly confused. So, I do think you're right, though. If they were to release some great Star Wars content, we could get back on the horse relatively quickly. Like, if they did a trilogy that was top notch, Star Wars would be reinvigorated as a fan base. The whole reason and, and idea behind the breaking of it, the stopping, is that we can kind of try to forget what it is right now, which is an embarrassing IP, and that we can be like, we're ready. Because um, a break can do a lot in terms of break. Like, George Lucas knew this, he understood it pretty well, seemingly. It's like uh, he managed to mine Star Wars, one of the most profitable IPs in history. And you look back and you're like, wait a minute, three movies, and then and then he waited that long, and then did another three. And I'm like, yeah, that's how powerful Star Wars was. And um, you well, know, what are they for that technology, right? Well, that that too, but like he could have been making a lot more, right? We got a few extra things and a lot of like, um, uh, you know, extended stuff. But if he yeah, had, but George isn't really the type to milk something. He's the type to milk the merchandise. Um, yeah, um, which artist, again, he cares about the story. I assume you guys know that some of the stats on that, like the merchandise falling apart for Star Wars, the oh, engagement in the. Yeah. I know people that that work actually and selling the merch and the, all the race shirts and the sequel trilogy shirts and mm. items and memorabilia are just not selling, stuck on shelves. But things from you know however twenty many twenty thirty forty years ago of like Darth Vader, a T shirt of him or whatever, just sold out constantly. When I worked at Disney, that was the only thing that was left on the shelves. When it was stuff for the OT and the prequels and that kind of stuff, it was always oh. sold out day one. Everybody bought it, and then the stuff that was left over was the stuff for the sequels at the time. And then yeah. that was that was also before Mando season one, so that was literally all that was out at the time. And yeah. the pegs were always full of that stuff. Yeah. I assume you guys covered the uh, the Re Reva Reva lightsaber didn't get funded. There wasn't enough people to even start oh. up. Oh, it didn't yep. get funded. So really? that was such a joke because if it would have been just titled Grand Inquisitor, it probably would have got back because there's a lot of people that like the Grand Inquisitor from Rebels, not necessarily the Kenobi show, but because it said Reva on it on the box on the plate where you would display it. But it was just an Inquisitor lightsaber, so why not just call it Inquisitor lightsaber? That it's was the same ridiculous. thing with the uh, the Skywalker Legacy Ray saber but it just looks like 
the regular Luke Skywalker, Anakin's Revenge of the Sith lightsaber. It mm. was just the way that it was marketed as as Ray's saber that you can still find it at Galaxy's Edge all over the place. It's in stock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Here's a question. If the if the if the timeline for Star Wars' future was going to be stuff like Mando Season 2's finale exclusively, mm. pretty much that, would you guys consider that a good outcome? No. Why? Well, I need more than just a, a swashbuckler, you know? Yeah, obviously, I, I don't just mean that scene over and over again. I mean, like, no. it, the content would be characters you know doing things you recognize that they would do, but not much in terms of a you know, dialogue or development. No. no That'll be a bad outcome. I, that would be a bad outcome. That's yeah. not what I would want to see at all. I mean, Star Wars is so much more than just Anakin swinging his lightsaber at Darth Vader. Um, you know, people forget that the OT was primarily uh, a lot of not just world building, but also character building and dialogue. And so that's, that's why when my, the prequels um... came out, people were like, well, what's with this dialogue? It's like, yeah, the dialogue in the prequels wasn't the best. It was pretty rough but at least they were getting the point across of the story being told and the characters and what they were going through and that's, so that's my concern and that's what my video that people are mentioning to you is all about um mm -hmm. the first five minutes i talk about an episode that's similar to one of the ones of ahsoka to um futurama and the one from buffy the vampire slayer and then i focus on ahsoka and talk about like the difference in writing disciplines and how star wars is heading at least in terms of its praise and criticism to a place where we're not going to be getting anywhere near it's going to be much hollow much yeah. more hollow and much more focused on how everyone perceives characters. And I, th I can't remember, I think it was Robert Meyer Burnett put it this way, that Star Wars is just, it's become, uh, it's about Star Wars. It's not about characters. It's not about uh, journeys and stories to tell. It's it's about the meta of itself trying to live. It's like a Ouroboros or a vampire eating its own blood. Like it's, it's desperately trying to stay alive now because it damaged itself so much. It doesn't know what else to do. And that's mm -hmm. Disney's fault, obviously. Right. But that's my concern and my fear that that's that's all we're going to get now. That's the best of it is to see Luke, a CGI monstrosity, saying like the Force maybe. Oh, <laughs> when he's gone, he's one with the Force now. He was having he was having camera issues beforehand, so uh, it could be that. It could be that. Um, which are we I would are we live do. or? Oh yeah, no, we're still we're live. Still it's, it's the three it's, of us now. It really right. is rule of three now. Rule of three. <laughs> it's our show. So, so Mahler, have you watched the Clone Wars or Rebels at all? The animated stuff? Ooh, I watched yeah. season one of the Clone Wars, and I oh. think I watched part of season two of the Clone Wars, and then I said like, okay, this isn't for me. Yeah, those are like the worst two. It starts to pick up like season three. <laughs> there's Four a lot of five. there's a lot of filler, but there's some really really good arcs in there. Did you watch Rebels at all? Uh, a friend of mine that I considered quite trustworthy said that Clone Wars is better than Rebels, like by far. And so, if you mm. didn't like Clone Wars, you're not gonna like Rebels. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll stay away from that. It's not my thing. I dig that take. What about Tales, though? Tales was short. Tales of the Jedi. I I was less aware of this, and considering the praise you guys have given it, I'm more than willing to check it out if it's it's uh, better than oh. both Clone Wars and Rebels. In yep, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. It's, all right. Well, yeah, six... I'll put that on the list. It's now, six episodes, and they're like 12 to 15 minutes each. It's very quick, but it's three episodes about Ahsoka and three episodes about Dooku. And as much as you liked Ahsoka... Oh, you um, haven't seen I don't, Tales? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. I don't know how much you'd enjoy maybe the Ahsoka content. I don't know how much you like Ahsoka as a character, considering you're not really the biggest fan of Clone Wars, and obviously you're not the biggest fan of the Ahsoka show. So seeing a couple episodes where it's specifically building into her story and fitting into parts in her timeline... Um, fair, but the Dooku stuff is awesome. It's the Dooku stuff yeah. that, that blew me away. Yep. I, I don't even remember the Ahsoka episodes. I remember just Ahsoka and um, her live action show. I just thought she, I didn't hate her. I just thought she was lame. I, I didn't get a lot out of her. And then Sabine was the one I probably took the most issue with. And then yeah. Hera, I thought was completely wasted. And it sucks because yeah. they're all actresses, man. I know yeah. Mary Elizabeth Winstead can act. I know yeah. that Rosario Dawson can act. And yeah. uh, they weren't pushed at all. Most of it was very dry and uh well static i guess but there's a reason for that it's because of the time in the empire they're not going to be hopeful and go lucky until she shifts into the white version i'm not looking for that i just want an emotional performance of any kind because you get glimpses every once in a while it, it, one of the bigger examples I, I think we had on uh efap was when they're in that space battle and she tells us being how they're going to be taking out the ships and they get one in like a unified way uh, or i think she orders she gives her the signal she says uh, she wants to shout now now, a lot of characters will go, now! Like, like they've got to get really into it, energy. Yeah. And Rosario Dawson goes, now! 
And yeah. I was like, oh, I felt that. Like, yeah. Damn. No, I know what you're saying about that. But it's also like, I feel like you have the same sort of thoughts about Luke when he entered the room in Mando season two finale, where he, he just didn't really ask questions. He was just pretty calm and quiet. But that's yeah. who Luke is. Like, he doesn't need to ask questions because the questions that he needs answered, he already knows the answer to. And if he, he doesn't, would, he doesn't matter because he's going to. He wouldn't be able to have a lot of the answers for why these people are here exactly and what their nature is and what they've done. He doesn't care. Right? Luke doesn't care. I don't think he cares. No. Because he, he, he is sitting up here where he's come to take the child. Everyone else with their own problems or whatever it might be, it doesn't matter to him. He's on a different journey. I don't buy it. I'm sorry. I think that Luke would be very invested in knowing how this all came to be, why they're even on this particular ship, Who's what the, why were the robots after them, what's going on here. Like, And to get to know people. Luke's a very personable guy. Yeah. Yeah, but you also got to see that this is five years after he defeated the Emperor and Vader for what the galaxy thinks. So he doesn't really know who he can trust at this point. He doesn't know who he can really talk to. And he just is there for the child. He knows that he's force sensitive. He's like a baby Yoda. And he knows that the Empire, whoever the remnants of them, want him. And so he doesn't need to say much. He's a boss. Walks in the room. Takes the kid. Pieces out. Does what he needs to do. So, um, I mean, there explain. you go. I guess we disagree on <laughs> what Luke would have done in that scenario. <laughs> you think he, what do you think? Well, if you were writing that episode and let's say it, would, it had to go there, what would you put in? So I need to know, I need to be sure of, and this is the thing, it's a complication of canon, what Luke would perceive as the people and their uniforms and why they would be there in that room and then what interests he would have in figuring out why this would all be happening. Obviously, you'd want information on uh, Moff Gideon. That's yeah. a that's a huge deal. It's like what what is this guy and what does he represent? And what's going on with the Empire? That's a huge problem we have in Ahsoka and some other stuff. Is like where is Luke? Why isn't he aware of all this stuff? We know he's sitting on a planet right now, meditating when yeah. he should be actively involved. This is absurd. Like he he's one of the most invested in making sure the horrors of the Empire would never rise again. That sort of stuff. But of course they're building to the sequel trilogy now, so I wonder if they're tethered to the fact that they've got to get him out of interest for galaxy concerns and his own family. I think that they're actually going to now build it up to the point where Luke is going to be the hero. Because Ahsoka is completely gone. She's trapped in that other galaxy, and now Luke has to be the one to save the day. He's the only one in this galaxy now. Well, besides Cal Kestis, but I mean, what's he compared to Luke? Do you worry that we're heading toward the sequels and so they're going to have to build it that way? Of course I worry. Yeah. <laughs> of course I worry. <laughs> <laughs> of course, man. Yeah, no, I won't bullshit mm -hmm. you. I'm, I'm always worried, bro. And when, when it comes to Disney now, I, I don't know. I think that um, one of the most embarrassing misses from them was uh, showing us that Ahsoka and Luke met, and they talked about nothing. Dude, yeah, I know. Yeah, I want to know how they met. Like, That's exactly. what I want to see. Can you imagine the conversations those two could have? Yeah. I could. And what did we get? It's like, you're so much like your father. It's like, okay. That's all I have is imagination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the point. situation we're in. You know, it's, it's all we got. It's just, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, see what happens, I guess. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it, it turns out all right. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, at least, uh, you know, we'll all be along for the ride. <laughs> Hell Yeah. I mean, it, it yeah. sounds like we were all in the camp of please get better, please get better. We're in, the, we're in the same camp. I don't think there's anything really that we disagree on for the most part in terms of core values at all. Sometimes I wonder if that's the same for literally everyone. It's just that the the internet creates sort of, it relies on like the tribalism of humans at the core. And uh, we split off and then we start to get really aggressive and uh, cartoon versions of each other are sent to each other. You know what I mean? Like your worst takes and my worst takes are uh, tumbled into an insane version and then sent to people and it'd be like, oh, that's who that is? Mm, yeah, that's what they think? Yeah, absolutely. But that, that can be said for so many people online. And it's like, you know. All of those gonna people like aren't going to listen to this two-hour live stream. They're just going to clip the part and wait for something new to come out on Twitter. Well, I was actually going to say, I hope you guys don't mind if I can put this on our EFAB channel, uh, at least the part that I'm in, so that they can know that you and I have spoken. Because they... <laughs> Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, go for it, man. Yeah, and that goes for anyone else too. If you want to take clips and stuff and post it on social media, go for it. I don't care. It's all good with me. You excited for any particular project coming up for Star Wars? Tells the Jedi too. Yeah, fair. Hopefully, but Again, how does um? How do you feel about Ahsoka season two in terms of like excitement of quality? 
I'm pretty excited for it because I know that Ahsoka's out now, and it and and it's we got rid of all the the fluff and the exposition and all that for the new characters, and we're now focusing on uh, Luke. I hope. Who else is going to save the day in that galaxy? Well, I mean, if it was called Ahsoka season two, I presume that we spend most of it on that other galaxy, right? Well, I would assume many things about Disney Star Wars, but. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, proven wrong. How'd you feel about uh, the Pandaverse episode of South Park? Oh, dude, it was amazing. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah it's about time. And, and it's so weird to me that so many people online are basically saying that they're making fun of people like us. I, I mean, like. So one of the takes I had from first seeing it, uh, I said this to my friends at the time, but I said it to Gary from Nerdrotic about it on, on streams. It's like, I kind of wish they took more shots at us. Uh, it was a little... Um, little weak on that side of things it was more yeah. it was way heavy toward disney which perhaps that's that should, should be how it is right the power imbalance between us and a mega billionaire corporation exactly. it's not exactly like we should be 50 50. no but um it's funny that i had that perspective and then i saw people online be like you guys you fools the episode's all about how horrible you are it's like i know i was like, i don't think so hmm, but all right i kind of missed that memo but all right fair enough it's mostly about how kathleen kennedy's <laughs> dropped the ball but yeah okay yeah sure whatever you want Whatever helps you sleep at night. No problem. <laughs> I think they're going to try and claim it no matter what. That's some. That's another weird thing. Everyone wants to claim uh, whatever particularly like high loved art as their representative. Yeah. Because uh, South Park obviously is known for making fun of everybody. That's yeah. Yes. Why I love them. Yeah, I know. Um, but but that's also you know you can't make fun of everyone because there's always that one group of people who's going to have a problem with it. But they can laugh at everyone else. Yep. Yeah. But not themselves. Yep. I mean, we were talking about it last week. George Lucas was the biggest fan of like the Family Guy specials of Blue yeah. Harvest and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, he's the guy who made it, and he loved being it's, being made fun of for it. I yeah. mean, as long as it was tasteful and it made sense and the points were funny, I mean, that's what it's all about. So, yeah. and it just made us. I know for me, we were talking about it last week. Like, it just made me more of a fan of Star Wars watching Blue Harvest when that was coming out, and I was what in middle school or whatever. And seeing that and being like, oh, this is cool. This is hilarious. Star Wars is being made fun of. That didn't make me dislike Empire anymore. Right. It's just, it's it's all part of it. And it's all, that's what comedy is supposed to be. And I think that's what, honestly, all media should be. And if you can't stand up to that being made fun of, then you probably don't have the base to stand on to begin with. Oh, dude. Yeah, no. Ugh. The people who throw stones, you'd be surprised how many of them live in little glass houses. If you make one tweet and then you get a few people coming after them, they're like, you said everyone to harass me. Yep. You literally oh have a tweet God. that's like got three million views on it about slandering me. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Am I just supposed to sit here and say, hey, take it. Give it to me. No, <laughs> man. I'm not going to do that. Are you kidding me? Nice. Yeah, no, it's insane. The entitlement of I should be able to throw anything I can at you, and if you have enough one more subscriber than me, then you can't say anything you, back. Yep. You incite violence, you horrible human. Pick it on the little guy. Yeah, literally. Uh, so, no, well, well, maybe don't. you shouldn't have picked on the little corporation. How about that? Don't fucking come into the den of a bear and wake him up when he's sleeping, and then wonder why you get swatted. It's just, don't poke at a hornet's nest. What are you doing? Yep. I don't understand the psychology behind that, but yeah, that's the internet. Mm -hmm. It's okay. But you know, we're supposed to be the 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 bigger man here, right? We're supposed to be the one who doesn't say anything, doesn't defend ourselves. That's that's fine. Whatever. Is what it is. <laughs> we'll Baller, what's your future. what's your last? Uh, I I know you're probably going to say Andor, but like, if you had to give your next two under that list under Andor, what would it be? Not counting the original six. So. Disney Star Wars, what's my yep. next? Yep. Maybe Rogue One. And then <laughs> uh, Mando Season and it's 1. It's a real long drop before you pick something else. <laughs> Mando Season 1, I uh, was quite positive about in the first, I think, three episodes, despite my issues with a couple like bits of the writing. I think it was either the third or the fourth one. There's an episode where they have to deal with an ATST. Is that four? Right. That's and in the woods, uh, yeah, the I woods wanted to kill myself watching that. But everyone's so retarded. Uh, it's they have a ship, and they don't think to use that against the ATST. The whole episode, instead, to train a bunch of villagers with <laughs> carbon sticks and stuff. To, I, I'm not going to get into it. Of course, I need to rewatch it to give you guys better arguments. But I was just like, no, what the hell's going on? And I sort of looked back, and I was like, oh, I think I was way too nice to this show because I was so desperate 
for um we've talked about it on our show so many times before it came out we want this bounty hunter who's disconnected from everything can be a mandalorian can be whatever and he's just trying to make his way the classic line I just want to see that shit and the big problem i had with mando see the end of season one and then season two season three, it's like mando's starting to become one of the most important characters in the star wars universe who's collecting like trinkets from all the main characters and meeting everyone and i was just like no man i thought he was supposed to be like a Lone Ranger out there doing his thing in the Star Wars world, but he's become yeah. incredibly important. And something I actually wouldn't mind talking with you guys about is like, do you have any issue with um, Ahsoka becoming more and more and more important and powerful and centered? I don't, mm, but no. like, that's kind of character I, development, so that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So for us, we've seen all seven seasons of Clone Wars, we've seen four seasons of Rebels and Tales. So we know her whole story. So for us, there's a lot more there. And like you not seeing all that and just seeing what you got in Ahsoka, I could see why you had that perspective. So for me, I don't mind it because it, it it was built up in all the animated, but you had to have seen all of it. I prefer Ahsoka being a spotlight character over Ray being a spotlight character. Yeah, oh, agreed there. No, yep. you know what I mean. Um, I think for, I mean, what I was in fifth grade when the Clone Wars started coming out so like me as a fan of ahsoka for so long like now being older and being able to pinpoint like oh that's probably not the best writing decision but still being a fan of ahsoka i think that i have more of the affinity for seeing her get the spotlight versus somebody like ray however or reva, or reva but however in this timeline there are people to use reva as an example of like I would rather see an Obi-Wan Kenobi show about Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker versus Reva and everybody else they threw at us versus who we actually saw in Kenobi. So when you ask about spotlight, it's like I enjoy seeing Ahsoka in the spotlight, but that doesn't mean if I had to choose between Ahsoka and Luke Skywalker post Return of the Jedi, I would choose Ahsoka. I'd choose Luke Skywalker every day of the week, but it's just in, in terms of preference when you're digging through that lego bucket of characters to play with it's like ah I'd rather play with ahsoka than play with reva you know what i mean <laughs> and uh sorry uh star wars Sith six, six, made a very good point that's going to be informing a lot of uh my perception which is why i usually try and branch out and ask people different questions to find out mm -hmm. more and something i didn't know because i hadn't seen those particular episodes is that and correct me if i'm wrong on this but ahsoka was almost <laughs> Lovely. Sorry, that just distracted me. Uh, Ahsoka <laughs> was almost dead. She was going to die, and uh, Ezra she, pulls her. Yeah, she died a couple of times. Yeah. She She's died, died like three times. She now. died in Clone Wars. Uh, she died in Rebels, she and then Ezra die. brought her back. Yeah. So the like the interesting god. thing in Clone Wars was the Mortis arc, where she died on Mortis, and the Mortis god used her life essence to bring her back to life. Deus so that's why machina. she's that's why she's kind of like a, a Mortis god right now. So, like, you should watch those episodes, the the three Mortis arc episodes for Clone Wars, and it'll make that ending of Ahsoka a lot more meaningful with Balin on the statue of the three Mortis gods. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, in a broad writing sense, right, that goal, we've moved her to being incredibly important, and she's been saved from death twice. Uh, sorry, even maybe three times. Twice. I'm not sure. twice. Third time Meanwhile, now as Ahsoka. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, someone who has possibly the most dramatic importance to the universe actively and currently has been sidelined to the point of not even... Was he mentioned in Ahsoka, Luke Skywalker? Oh, no. 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 Thrawn, so, Thrawn says Thrawn is scared of the Padawan of Anakin Skywalker, but is going to end up in the new galaxy with two literal offspring of Anakin Skywalker yeah. and didn't yeah. know about it. So, like, that's kind of where I'm coming from. Not that mm -hmm. Ahsoka shouldn't be important, because she absolutely should, but the, I feel like the focus is on her at the expense of Luke. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I'd much rather have it be on Luke. And they kind of ruined that with how they portrayed Luke in The Last Jedi. From there, it was downhill. But um, no, yeah, I'd, I'd much rather have that focus be on Luke from the beginning. But I mean, that's not what we got. Yeah, I think that's more mm -hmm. of a, a Disney thing of being able to give a character like Ahsoka the spotlight. And I mean, you could use the whole like you said about the skinwalker thing of like they don't have to do cgi on ahsoka to put give her the spotlight and do yeah. all this stuff but like for luke skywalker you got to deal with okay do we bring back mark hamill do we bring back a cgi do we do it all in animation so there's more yeah. there's more hoops when well, it comes they... to luke if i if if i had to choose them jumping through all of those hoops versus ahsoka like i said yeah i i don't care what happens in clone wars i don't care what happens in rebels i love ahsoka but like give me luke skywalker that's you, i think you're absolutely Star correct Wars. 
but we do know they have more than enough budget to do it. And we do know they have a particular attitude when it comes to Luke Skywalker. We've seen it play yeah. out. And um, I guess to finally add to that as well, they even gave Leia, you know, action and an agency in this season, but not Luke. Leia wasn't even seen. Carrie Fisher's gone. Yeah. And we still got, you know, more efforts and more interest and more involvement oh. from Leia. So part of that, though, is in Rebels because uh, Leia was in a couple episodes of Rebels. So she has a relationship yeah. with Ezra and Hera. So that's why that kind of ties in. It makes sense that she would help her in Ahsoka because they were uh, did a couple of missions in Rebels. Not to oh, say it wouldn't make sense course, that Luke Skywalker didn't yeah, show up. You know what I mean? Still the writer's decision to not have Luke. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. I think there's also that thing of maybe. Now, with I know, like you said about Mando season two's uh, finale and Book of Boba Fett is maybe they chose somebody like Leia not to involve Luke as like, we don't want to overuse him sort of thing. And we'll keep the magic where the magic is. And I know it was the Skinwalker situation for you, but like for a lot of people, I, I know at least for me, like I was in the same boat of like tears in my eyes watching Luke Skywalker return as much as it was him in a hood and we don't see his face until the end. It's like that felt the most like Luke Skywalker to me coming off last Jedi. So um, I guess the whole, I, I would assume the whole, we don't want to overuse him thing comes into play as much as I don't agree with that. I don't think you can overuse Luke Skywalker as long as you're using him correctly. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. What do you guys think of Taika Waititi making it canon that star stormtroopers can't shoot for shit? I, uh, I mean, it, oh, it seems like stormtroopers are, but that's the thing in Andor, stormtroopers were kind of feared. But yep. then, which is cool uh, in Obi Wan Kenobi, yeah, which is great. Which is then in Obi Wan Kenobi, or um, yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi, Kenobi. <laughs> was slapped in the head. And I am, in the yeah. Ooh. yeah, I was losing it when I saw that finale where they like have him be like, I can't even, I can't even shoot a can. I was like, why would you do that? Why? <laughs> like, when Anakin slashed Reva, I and she survived. Yeah, not even. The first time, the second time too. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, yeah. The excuse right. of I've seen people like the whole Twitter thing of like people posting uh, anatomical like oh organs of people being like, well, if the lightsaber goes through this exact point, it's not going to affect <laughs> them as much as they can because of the technology at this point. It's like she's a kid. Like if you get stabbed, you get stabbed. There's no way. Uh, maybe it's the force or whatever. There's no way he knows exactly where to stab her twice. Are you kidding me? We had a very angry comment when we pointed out, like, how is the Inquisitor guy, he got stabbed too, and he's alive too. And then someone was like, they have two stomachs, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. That it, it sucks to not have them both. <laughs> yeah, that was a major. So what, yeah. Sabine, the Grand Inquisitor, mm -hmm. Reva twice, they've all been able to come back with the medical advancements. However, Poor Qui Gon. For however, Qui Gon, Qui -Gon Jin pulling out for Qui Gon. What are you gonna Man. do? I can't believe they had Liam Neeson and they got him in the outfit just to do that. He should yeah. have been more in there, man. That's crazy. Like, he should have been more. Like there was a couple of times he was calling to him, and like I, yeah. he should have came in those moments. But just at the very end, like come on, man. For me, that whole show led up to what I wanted to see in the show. Like as much as I wanted to see you and Hayden return, like. The most interesting parts to me about Obi-Wan in the deserts is like him going into that nomad learning about the force with Qui-Gon as a, a force ghost. So once that show ended, I was like, cool, hopefully if they do a season two, that's the actual I wish that just started the show. Like yeah. the hate and stuff was great, but I would have rather just seen where they left off. You know what I mean? I don't know. Oh, I had so many ideas for the Kenobi show. I'm sure you guys did as well. I don't yeah, know, dude, of course. I mean, there was oh, supposed to be tons. a trilogy before that, and then it became something else. I think everybody had 10 years worth of ideas from a movie <laughs> to a show to three movies to whatever we got. So everybody had an idea. It's just of course. somehow that's the one that stuck. Somehow Palpatine returned. Mm, God. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> He's coming back. Yeah, probably. Probably yep. again. We'll see him yeah, again with the cloning stuff. Me to the, the Ray movie. It's like, what, what the... I don't know, bro. <laughs> yeah, to, to start off with the Ray movie after yeah. not being in the theaters for like six, seven, eight years, whenever this drops, is ridiculous. Yeah. It's the most wild double down. And what's strange, and the thing that I always bring up in terms of outside of like the story and the movies is like Galaxy's Edge is supposed to take place in the time of the sequels, which is why you don't see anybody from the OT or the prequels or 
anywhere else. But like recently they've realized that like, oh, people don't want to just go take pictures with Ray and Kylo Ren. They'd like to see other people. However, instead of giving you the OT and the prequels characters, they've given you Ahsoka and Hera and Chopper. And it's like as much as people would like to go see them, it's just that stretch of rather than giving the people what they want, they'll give the people kind of what they want, but in in the terms of what's going to make them the most money of, hey, this is a show that's coming out right now for Mando or Boba Fett. So it's just, I think that's the perfect example of, hey, we're going to really stick to this and we're really going to go off on, it's, this is just the sequels and this is where you have to live and it's an experience when you go there. I mean, you saw what happened with the the whole hotel situation. It's just, it's so strange what they choose to throw money at. You know what I mean? And I think when we were talking about Andor earlier of the money, it's like, I'm not mad that Andor got all that money. I'm mad that Kenobi didn't and a show like She-Hulk did, regardless of the amount of money it got. If it if it was a million dollar show, like you said, and it was great, I would have loved that. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't. And at the end of the day, all I can say is maybe that would have helped. You know what I mean? So in terms of quality. Oh, like I said, man, get, just get someone who loves Star Wars in a cave with with uh, Ian McGregor for a week, and they can make a better <laughs> An show. iPhone <laughs> and a, a flip phone. <laughs> yeah, what a shame. What are you gonna do? Just Nothing duh. you can really do. Just hope for the best, and that's kind of like my whole uh, yeah idea with Star Wars going forward. It's like, well, I'm not really judging it on what we used to have. I'm judging it kind of on what it is now today, and like, what's the best that we can get? Baller, that... I would love your opinion on that what's his name the director who came out and said that he would only do a star wars movie if he got to reboot it from jump of oh. just using luke and han and do the do a new hope but in the way that he wants to was that matthew vaughn uh i who forget it was else? the guy who did the kingsman i, I think that is Matt. yeah a horrible fucking idea <laughs> and never ever it's something that nerd Roddick has said is going to be the the photo sort of the death knell of star wars as an ip is when they announced the remake of the ot and i was just like what a huge mistake that would be yeah enormous mistake um you're not you're not going to do better i'm sorry it's, it's just crazy like, like at remaking point, the prequels they wouldn't yeah. do better they're not gonna it's yeah it's, it's just wild at this point that star wars is in such a place where when that got posted on twitter there were the people of like well star wars isn't great right now so maybe he'll do something better with it where it's oh. like people are so desperate for star wars that isn't what we've been getting recently that they would go with recasting everybody from jump to a completely new hope and and just him be the george lucas in that new hope story it's just it's wild so, that it's gotten to that place you know it's so unfortunate because i would happily have him make something in the star wars universe i don't Absolutely. want to remake the ot like no 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 no. Yeah. especially because you'd think it would be basic math it's like you guys understand the ot and pr the prequels as foundations of what's keeping everything alive like yeah. people come back to it they think about it they want more from that era they want more of those yeah. characters they fell in love with the idea that you want to try and paint over them like <laughs> No, yeah. stop. no, dude. And then and then to create their own kind of story on top of it, it's like you, they're, they're just creating something that they think works, but they're not going like, how could they take George's? You're familiar with George's sequel trilogy that he had planned. Yeah. Book, yeah. With the wills and stuff, right? No. The ball. No, that was an older one. version. Oh, OK. Yeah, there was a 2019 one um, where he spoke with Paul Duncan, who created a two large archive books called Star Wars Archives, one to three and then four to six. And I had the privilege of speaking with Paul Duncan and interviewing him on the channel. And he full on sat with George in 2019, I believe it was. And George gave him the full outline for the sequel trilogy that he was going to make. And it involved Darth Maul coming back, filling in the void that was... So there was a massive void in the galaxy because Palpatine left. And all of these different planets had different sort of empire loyalists or people even, you know, gangs and groups trying to take advantage of this void and trying to claim mm -hmm. power. And so then you had Maul that comes in with his crime syndicate that he's very familiar with, and you had Darth Talon come in. Luke Skywalker was going to put together the Jedi Order again and try to find new students, and Leia was going to be a very major focal point of the entire story where she would rise to political power herself. Mm -hmm. And so we were supposed to get that story with George, but we didn't. Well, I would have much rather seen that. Yeah. Interesting idea, but what if Rey was to build the Jedi Temple? I think she's going to in this new movie, right? That's, what I'm that saying, the... is, that's what's happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god! Probably. 
That's which, why I was thinking oh, it would be cool if they bring, like, is that what Dave is trying to do now with, you know, uh, Luke and bring Maul back with the Night Sisters and all this stuff? They're going to resurrect go to him here. or something. That's why I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's Darth Maul because they're, they're, he wants to do George's sequel trilogy before Disney's sequel trilogy to kind of give everyone a happy ending. But I don't know. We'll see. We will see. Because he won't easily into a movie, right? A Mandoverse movie? Yeah, supposedly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. There but was that rumor season... that it was supposed to be called Heir to the Empire. Or that was a, like There that. was a rumor for a while. Oh. But I think we're going to get season two of Ahsoka first, and then we're going to get season four of Mando, and maybe even season two of Boba Fett before we get that movie. That was a huge misstep with Mando season three, the, from what I saw of fans online. <laughs> just... Massive. Massive. Lizzo, baby. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Remind me. Well, because uh, I'm assuming you guys felt the same way, but when the Mando episodes were injected into Boba Fett, there was this realization of like, wait, did you just reset like the ending of Mando season two? Then yep. you watch season three and you're like, yes, they did. That's yep. completely done. And uh, that has to have been done out of panic, I suppose. Like the formula, it's been so good. People love it. We got to keep it going. Yeah. And yeah. Just to sell more Grogu stuff. Well, probably. then to say that Grogu was with Luke for two years. That was confusing. When did yeah. that happen? Yeah. Can we see that? Like, what? No, you cannot. Yeah. Yep. You cannot see any of the conversations that Ahsoka had with Luke during that two years as well. We'll get a comic in 2030 oh, God, of man. what Luke was doing with Grogu on that yeah, planet. Enough with these comics, dude. We need to see the actual thing. It's just... Do you think it was weird that he sent Grogu back with R2-D2? Like a Uber? Like a space Uber? Like a, like a, like a, like a Uber? Like, yeah. Like, no respect. That was so strange. I thought weird. Luke was going to pop up there in that final fight, and I was kind of hyped if we were going to see mm. Luke again, but nothing. Yeah. Nothing. He doesn't care, guys. Luke's busy. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's busy doing what exactly? Does that That's mean? my big concern is that we're building up to the the hobo Luke who doesn't care about anything and wants exactly. to die. Which Probably. Is most... But but what I'm hoping is that Dave would create some sort of a hero Luke like he was supposed to be, like George built him up to be, uh, at the end of Jedi, in this span between six and seven, which I don't know. We'll see. What's see interesting happens. though is in in canon right now, I'm pretty sure, like with the battlefront stuff and the shadows of the Sith and these comics and all that. And obviously Dave has said multiple times that he doesn't give a rat's ass about that stuff. And he'll no. do what he wants when he comes after it. But like yeah. in terms of Canon right now, he's supposed to be like going off to find force archives and holocrons and Jedi archives and going on adventures during this time. However, we don't know if that was in the five years between return of the Jedi. And when we see him with Grogu, maybe he's done by that point. Maybe that already happened in those five years. So I don't know. It's just, now that it's after, it's that good point of like, how soon is Luke going to turn into what we saw in the sequels? Into and there's that Jake. Shadows of the Sith book where he's like fighting like shadow monsters, but Anakin's yeah, yeah, yeah. Force Ghost comes back. And yeah. that's what made it so Anakin's Force Ghost didn't show up in the sequels because he <laughs> used too much of his Force essence and <laughs> dissipated into the I, Force. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I didn't read the book for that reason. I, like, I thought it was cool that Anakin came in there because we didn't really have any Anakin. And then I was like, uh... Yeah. yeah. Their it's canon... Those... Um, sorry to interrupt. Their, their canon oh, is good. absolutely nuts. Like, I remember when I was trying to do a deep dive of TFA, I was reading about how... Um, I was trying to get into, like, how did this happen with Poe? If you guys remember, it was quite public. Poe was supposed to die in the first yeah. act. But he, you know, he compelled them to keep him in. Yeah. Like, yeah okay, we bring you back. I remember being like, what could possibly explain what the hell happened and where was he? And there was like a book that came out way later that was like, okay, so he gets out of there and he avoids like coverage from any of the the incoming First Order. He goes to the village and he's looking for Finn, but oh, he's just because he's just missed him. And then he sort of heads back and yes, it makes sense. It totally, all of it makes sense. It's just like it's all these weird band aids after the fact. Yeah, they it's people fans are loud enough of like, hey, this doesn't make sense. And the story group goes back into the room looking like the Charlie Day meme from. It's always sunny in Philadelphia, and like it doesn't make sense. How do we make? How do we make it make sense? Yeah. And they oh, put out a so book or a comic for those writers of those like tertiary third party books that are supposed to connect all this shit. Like I remember one of them was supposed to explain Kylo Ren just fully. Who's like, okay, here it is, the definitive take on his life, how he came from where he was, how he got to. It's just like so fucking hard to follow. You get those three movies, it's a different character every time. Same for Hux, by the way. I never oh. would have pegged that he would be the most inconsistent character across the three movies. He's like yeah. a different person yeah. every time. Yeah, Baller, either, would I never you have thought that? preferred the duel of the fate script for the rise of skywalker movie 
Probably yes. Yeah. Uh, from from the things I saw in it, Rise of Skywalker. So you know, like TFA, they, that's that's one of the more complicated ones in terms of like, oh, lots of damage is being done, but I guess you're setting the groundwork. You know, there's this that conversation. TLJ, I passionately hated. It's almost what yeah. launched my channel. I came out with a video really quick, just angry. Rise of Skywalker is like a clown movie. I remember being in the cinema and being like, they don't know how to go up? Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah, you should have been now? in it. Yeah. And Absolutely then they do that nuts. thing later of uh, in Rogue One. I, I saw this on Twitter maybe yesterday. Um, there's that thing. In, and I love Rogue One. I think Rogue One's the best that they've done in terms of movies, in a ver- in terms of content in a very long time. I love that movie. But there's that scene where Jin's going through the plans uh, on whatever that planet is looking for the death star plans and there's the plan that refers to them being able to track people through hyperspace to make things make sense when they do it in the last jedi of like oh no 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 it's right there you just got to know what it is it's just an easter egg guys we were planning on it it makes sense that they do that you know what i mean and it's just yeah, Jim yeah. flips through a name and it's right there. Oh, you give me PTSD band-aid. for all the conversations yeah. happening. Remember the like the hyperspace kamikaze? So many Star oh, Wars people were like, man. that makes sense because Holdo was the first person to really think oh. of it. Oh. It was a ship that was just <laughs> big enough. Oh, it was God. a sacrifice, guys. No one would want to give up a shit that a ship that big, but she did because it was to save a lot. It's like stop. Speaking it's of to save what we love. Tony, how when we do like because Tony and I are big like toy collectors on stuff, and yeah. there's Ollies around here where uh, <laughs> how many how many boxes full of Captain or whatever Holdo toys are there? That's the every, like no, don't, it, every Ollie store. Box. Every Ollie store in Florida has Holdo the Black Series six inch figure at every single store for seven ninety nine, and I see, I see her every week, and I I hate it. She's you just everywhere. have to walk past it to find the, the stuff that you actually want to see. Yeah. Full like shipping boxes. Like they send 50 from Star Wars Hasbro and they're like, hey, these are supposed to get put on shelves. Ollie's as a second, I guess not really a secondhand store, but like they sell the stuff that doesn't buy out really, stuff. Yeah, buy out stuff the first time. Those are unopened with like the factory seal tape on the shipping boxes filled with those. Like you could buy a full box for probably like 25 bucks of 30 to 40 Holdo figures at an Ollie's right now. It's just insane when you think about, yeah, merchandising, well, yeah. I mean, I Tony and I were talking about it the other day. It's just nuts. At all. How toxic it would get, too, because like Holdo, you know, keeping the plans away from Poe and then just all this like crazy toxic behavior as a person in that scenario and then being like i like you poe like you're 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 the best i actually like and yeah, being dude. like what is all that and then people being like you don't like it because it's a woman in power it's like what I, no yeah, yeah. Like, love Prince Jr. Leo Ghana is fucking amazing what are you talking about <laughs> yep i would compare what holdo did of like hating a character and and choosing the wrong decision what she did to Poe the entire time. And then at the end being like, Oh, she knew what she was doing all along. It was the yeah. right thing to kind of what Thrawn was doing in Ahsoka of like, <laughs> he's just getting beat, getting beat, getting beat. Nobody likes him. And then at the end he's going, you know, I did plan this. It's, it's just, <laughs> it's kind of that same thing of like, you hate a character until right at the end and they go, Oh, we are supposed to like them. They are a hero. You know what I mean? It's just yeah, yeah. Well, strange. It- Morgan Elsbeth uh, started to make me laugh because she felt like the. Um, do you know? Have you ever seen Anastasia or um, it's even like in Lion King? But like you have the villain character and then they have this subordinate sort of comic yeah. relief character who will sometimes be like, say for yeah. example, the evil guy's like, let's kill all the children. And the, yep. the comic relief yep. was like, oh, do we do we really need to do that? She kept being the character of why are we doing this? And yep. then Thrawn would be like, because we're going to win. And she's like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Because I, <laughs> I said so. <laughs> and then they clearly don't. My favorite thing about Thrawn, I think, was like, we're going to annihilate her. And then the next part was like, well, no, we're going to follow her and then destroy yeah, yep, her. Dude, and then he was what? like, no, uh, we're just going to let her choose her own path. <laughs> so yeah, like, and talks that's like, about it. Yeah. Ezra's out there this whole time, and he's just like, yeah, he's there. Like, well, Yeah, and they seem to even know the, the sort of vague area of where he like was. Like the direction yet. to point her in. Like, well, Yeah. yeah. Well, the Balin thing that you brought up earlier, Mahler, was like one of the biggest things for me in that episode of like, the whole show and and specifically the episode right before sets them both up Ahsoka and Balin as like, they don't need to have this next fight. They're both ready to not have this engagement, yeah. but, and right before that, what does Balin do? He says to Shin, 
I'm too good for this. Yeah. I'm going to go find my purpose and the thing that's calling to me. And Ahsoka, she has the whole transformation with Anakin afterwards and is ready to go. And afterwards, she's like, I'm just here to help my friends. That's what I'm here for. It doesn't need to be conflict, blah, 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 blah. She's talking to Hu Yang the whole time. She's she's new enlightened with the white robes. And then they both just like Halo spawn together to be able to fight on that desert planet. It's like they you you wrote them to do something else and then it was just like oh but wait they got to fight one last time so right. i completely agree with you on that that's something i when you said that i was like hell yeah that's 100% what happened you just think of Ezra being like forces an ally that's all i need the next episode he's like there you go lightsaber <laughs> <laughs> and, and then yeah and and like when he was using the force he was kind of shitty at it like he wasn't really that great well yeah it yeah. was, it was yeah. yeah expecting like, he still Darth grabbed Maul a blaster the crazy yeah. thing to me was yeah. that it's like, you know, take a blaster. No, we'll take the lightsaber at least. He's like, no, 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 just the four. And it's like, she can't <laughs> use the lightsaber and the blasters. So you take should take at least one. Like, come on. Yeah. yeah. I, I will say, too, with the weird. with the Ezra thing, it's like when he, I, I clipped it, too, of like that versus the, the force is my ally. Uh, I don't need a lightsaber. It's like, okay, that's a cool line. If it was built on afterwards of him just not using a lightsaber. Yeah. And, being able to do the Dragon Ball Hadoukens and all that stuff, yeah. it would have been fun. But like comparing that to Luke just tossing the lightsaber over his shoulder and not explaining it, I've seen people be like, "Oh, well, that's what Luke meant in the Last Jedi. He didn't need the lightsaber." Is that oh, what they're saying now? Oh <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Immediately. I posted that clip of those two things back to back, and that was the first thing. It's well, you just don't understand. Luke meant the exact same thing. That's what he did when he threw the lightsaber. He doesn't need the lightsaber anymore. That's why he's scared of it when he falls over. Right? I guess we don't understand. Do you know, yeah. one of the things I love, love about the sequel trilogy is how much those films fight with each other. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, T yes. TFA is like, Ray, Nine. your parents, like, yeah. you know, they're out there to be found. It's going to be incredible. Then the second film's like, nobody. There's nobody. There's nothing there. <laughs> nobody. Yeah. Then the third film's like, no, no, no. Palpatine. <laughs> like, I posted literally. that clip the other day of of Daisy Ridley being asked after uh the Rise of Skywalker of she was in an interview with yeah. Josh Gad or whatever and he goes mm. he's like so you really didn't know the whole time and she goes no I had no idea. JJ said it was maybe an Obi-Wan Kenobi thing. Yeah. And then she was nobody and then she said I was the grandbaby of Palpatine and I said that's cool but then they didn't tell me until the last 2 weeks of shooting and it's just like that's the perfect example of why those movies don't make sense it's because your main character that your tentpole for the entire trilogy you didn't know who she was the entire time as you were writing it yeah and then you know mythologizing luke he's the one we're all leading to we're going to get him at the end of tfa he's going to come in and he's going to make all of this make sense but lead them be better and the second film's like no he's yep no no yep. And then the yeah. third film's like, no, 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 he is. He's a good, look at him. Oh, he's teaching. He's, he's, do you remember he catches the lightsaber as it's being thrown? I was like, yep. oh my God. <laughs> there was a, uh, in the trailer for, I think it was The Last Jedi. It was either The Last Jedi or The Rise of Skywalker. It's Luke saying the, the voiceover of Luke playing of being like, my father had the force. Yeah. My sister had it. I have it. And now you have it. And you're like, oh, Luke's going to be an awesome mentor. This is going to be fantastic. And then, look, I always say in The Last Jedi, the one scene that I'm like, eh, this is okay, is when Yoda says the whole thing about uh, failure being the best teacher. That's the most like Star Wars any part of that felt. However, you have to look at it through the lens of that's Yoda teaching Luke Skywalker that when it could have been Luke Skywalker teaching Rey that rather than Rey teaching Luke that. You know what I mean? Love um. Yeah love the lesson hate the context exactly everything about it yeah put the quote on a sticker but don't show me the movie where it came from you know what <laughs> I mean? it seems like we agree on pretty much everything dude i don't see any sort of uh differences here which is great well there we are yeah. <laughs> what a debate <laughs> reset <laughs> yeah. I think um, I think people view me as much more like i don't i don't like to use this way but hateful of more Disney Star Wars content compared to you, compared to you guys for sure. Like when we when someone says like Ahsoka season two, uh, Mola Reef, what do you guys think? And we're like, oh, it's gonna be bad. While you're like, oh, yeah, I hope it's gonna be good. You know, like a much more <laughs> optimistic point of view. I would still say I hope it's gonna be good, but I'm so I'm so aware of how these things are made. Like Marvel, I'd yeah. argue maybe there's even less hope yeah. when I know the creators behind it. And I know that their desperation for like reshoots and 
some of the worst damage that gets done is in reshoots at this point. Um, yeah. and the budgets are ballooned. So there's bleeding everywhere. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah, I want, I want better. But um, I think I'm more pessimistic than you guys, and that's probably the big sort of I, line. I want us. better, and I, I think I'm more hopeful. Yeah, that. but you know, every yeah. time, so, yeah. So that's I've been saying it since Book of Boba Fett when people are like, like if somebody in my day to day they know I'm the Star Wars guy around, and they're like, oh, you like Star Wars? What do you? How are are you excited for what's to come next? I always chalk it up to cautious optimism, with it being. 80% cautious and 20% optimism. Like, hey, it could all go to shit right here, but I'm at least going to give it a try before I see right. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but at least I, you know, I, I still keep tabs and I know that this and this was just completely crap. Yeah. And I'm very worried, but at the same time, yeah, I'm hopeful. Yeah. I'm not French, by the way. Nor do I drink wine, nor do I uh, eat cheese. Nor yeah, do I, wear a I have a mustache and a film. <laughs> He's the only I'm one, the one with a mustache. Yeah, I'm the one who went to film school with a mustache. <laughs> yeah. I have a beret somewhere. Yeah, enjoy this. Mahler, would you come back one day? Absolutely. You have a, you're have welcome to have a direct line to me. I was going to say, I don't know if um, you prefer I, Twitter, Discord, whatever. Uh, I like Instagram. Yeah, Discord's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I um, uh, do you want me to... you on the Twitters. Oh, yeah. What's yeah your... I can send it to you through Twitter DMs, uh, my Discord. Yeah, I'll, I'll hit you up on Discord or something like that. No problem. And yeah, uh, I suppose this goes both ways, but anything that you hear, um, I may as well not believe it about whatever I've said. And as <laughs> it goes for you. I think you'd always clarify in person because um, I, I, I really hate interpersonal dramas. I really hate creator dramas. I feel, yeah, I feel like yeah. a lot of them are encouraged by audiences. No offense, audience. Not not taking a shot at you, don't worry. It's just that um, oh, I much <laughs> yeah, prefer yeah. collaborations. Yeah, me too. Yep. That's why I, I figured we'd be fine because we both got friends of friends. Like um, I'm on very good terms. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know what your story was, what your angle was. They're just like, oh, he wants to debate you. He's a film major, and I'm like, oh, hey, <laughs> yo, man. No People ask me that. They're like, oh, more, what uh, what books have you read? What courses did you take? And I'm like, I watched a lot of movies and TV shows. <laughs> yeah, you're just it. an analytical person. You're just smart. Well, and a lot of people are like, he's not a fan of Star Wars, he's a fan of film. I'm like, dude, I'm a fan of Star Wars. I fucking love Star Wars. kind of wish I didn't sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. wild when people say that. Yeah. I know. Well, I'm sure all these clips will be taken uh, out of context. And Yay. And more oh, for sure. Clips. Great. Go for it. <laughs> Excellent. Um, thanks for coming on, man. I'm going to end the stream. i got to bounce soon anyways. But, um, no problem. Anytime. Yeah, and, yeah uh, catch you again yeah. next week or something. Thank I'll you so much Ryan for having me on guys. next week. So if you want to hop in, you're more than welcome. Good to meet all of you. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you, Mahler. All right. See you, folks. Later, man. Later. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. I had a good time.